It is now time for some Yellow Jacket football. Tonight, the Yellow Jackets take on the Dodge County Indians. Both teams are vying for their first region win. Here are your commentators, Jim Sewell and Chris Davis. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Pinelands. It's Friday night football here in the Pinelands as the Jeff Davis Yellow Jackets are taking on the Dodge County Indians. Welcome to the Three Rivers Meat Company pregame show. I'm Jim Sewell here. Alongside me is Coach Chris Davis, and down on the field is Josh Horton, our uh, Southern Eye Care sideline reporter. We'll be checking with him throughout the game. And, of course, our great uh, broadcast team from the high school who are doing all the behind the work, behind the scenes work here tonight, and always doing a great job for us, Chris. They do, and uh, again, we, I was on with somebody earlier today. It's just, it's amazing. And each time I watch these commercials each week, it's amazing we get to see what we do for um, mm -hmm. you know our community and this, these fine sponsors that we have for this program, and, and knowing that the money is going back into the athletics and the, and the production of this for all the people involved. Jeff Davis seeking its first win of the season. Facing one and five Dodge County, the Indians are also zero and two in region play, same as Jeff Davis. So both teams need to get a win tonight to keep their playoff hopes alive. And in Jeff Davis' case, if you win uh, three out of the next four, you can get your way into the playoffs. You, you can, Jim, mm -hmm. and that's what we were talking about uh, a little bit before we come on the air. Is you know how tough it is and how it's still wide open mm -hmm. for all these teams. Uh, you know, last week we had a real heartbreaking loss. Uh, there in the final few minutes of the game. Right. Uh, we had done a fantastic job uh, doing what we needed to do to play Yellow Jacket football and uh, kind of had some mistakes there at the end that cost us. Uh, Dodgers had a really good season. They played really close games for mm -hmm. some of their opponents. Right. Uh, and then they've kind of uh, they've had the injury bug hit them and uh, mm -hmm. cost them too. So the, tonight both these teams are looking to come out fighting, uh, ready to get another win in the column and let's get their first win in region play. As I mentioned, the Jackets have to win three of the next four, so playoff hope's still alive. We control our own destiny. That makes this almost a must-win game when one of those four teams left is the defending state champion, Fitzgerald Purple Hurricane. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, and as we talk about it and as we look at it, you know, the next game is always the next biggest. Mm -hmm. So right now this is the biggest game of the season for the Yellow Jackets as Dodge comes into town on wreck night, pink out night, and uh, – it's it's one of those situations of the Yellow Jackets can't be looking past it. Can't you know we got to win three out of four? Uh, excuse me, yeah, win three out of the next four. Mm -hmm. And but we have to focus tonight on Dodge County. Dodge County, their one in five start is their worst start since going one in four in 2016. But they still made the playoffs as they made the playoffs for ten straight years. So you know they're going to come out here fired up to try to get their season turned around and not lose that uh, break that long streak of getting into the playoffs most definitely and you know they, they're kind of they're they've got us then they've got Sumner mm -hmm. then they've got they finish up with Cook and Berry and who we know are both mm -hmm. tough opponents that the Yellow Jackets have played so um you know it, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to shake out with the way region one double is shaping up we're going to take a time out now get some word to my fine sponsors at two minute break this is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network Jeff Davis High School would like to thank the following alumni sponsors for their support of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Sweet Teas, Flowers, Gifts, and Custom Framing, Laney Internal Medicine Group, Lumber City Drugs, Cotton Partners, The Bedroom Store, Hazelhurst Auto, Pig Out Barbecue, Southern Root Salon, Stone's Machine Shop, Comfort Zone Heating and Air, Whitfield Free Love, South Georgia Dentistry, Coleman Tire and Auto, Alt Mulvey Outdoors, Water Service Center, Raglan Timber, Pallet One, McPherson Manufacturing, Renaissance Bank, Family Healthcare Connections, Davis Farm and Garden, Theater of Hazelhurst, Jeff Davis County Farm Bureau, and Bridgeford Church of God. Jeff Davis High School would like to thank the following alumni sponsor. Make the switch to Mitch, not only for your prescription needs, but also for your gift needs. Visit Designs and More by Brandy located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop designs and more by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone. Shoes by Corky and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. 
Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're the exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. At Altamaha Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Bridge. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altamahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back here at the Pinelands, the heck, Jeff Davis Marching Man Pride, the Pinelands on the field. We're going to pause here and we're going to perform the national anthem here on pregame show. to the flag of the United, United States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands. One, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank, you. Thank you. You may be seated. Now you have the pride of the Pinelands Marching Band, and uh, I believe they've got some of the younger kids out there with them too, Chris. Let's, we'll like to keep it right here and uh, listen to their performance. And they're going to do some more pregame work here on the Three Tonight Rivers. We, Meet company pregame show. We've got about 200 red football players and cheerleaders off to our left here, and they'll be out there to run through with the with the yellow jackets. So a great night here tonight. Um, head Dodge County head coach Ray Harden is in his second season with the Indians. His overall record is eight wins, nine losses. And uh, the only win of the season for Dodge County was against Washington County, 43-21. Their losses were to Bleckley, West Lawrence, Swainsboro, and Worth County. And a uh, very similar score between uh, Bleckley, I mean, between uh, Dodge's score with Swainsboro and ours. Both of them, we were both shut out by Swainsboro. I think theirs was 35 to nothing, ours was 42 nothing. So. Yeah, Jim, and you know, the, the game last week, uh, I, w I actually was able to listen to most of the Worth Dodge game, mm -hmm. and it was a back and forth game. Um, Worth came out on top there at the end. Had a couple of mis uh, Dodge had a couple of miscues, kind of like we did against Berrien. Um, so tonight should be a very good game between these two teams. It seems to be very equally matched. Um, so we'll, we're, we're in for a good night tonight. Jeff Davis crowd here is getting stands filled. People still coming in at the gate. Uh, very surprised by the number of uh, fans for Dodge tonight. Yeah. Usually they travel well. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping the band just pulled up for mm -hmm. them, so so maybe their parents are a little bit lagging. But um, you know, Dodge Dodge usually brings a very good crowd, so we'll see what's going on there. And as you see on your screen now, we've got all of the the red cheerleaders out there in the line with the yellow jacket cheerleaders and a crowd of young football players at the back of the end zone there. Uh, get waiting pregame here. Let's let you listen to a little bit of the Pride of the Pinelands.
Uh, you have the Pride of the Pine Lines marching bound. And they've done a great job. You also got to see all the kids out there on the field tonight. Let's take a two-minute timeout, get some words from our sponsors. We'll be back with more of the Three Rivers Meat Company pregame show after two minutes on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. Make the switch to Mitch for all your over-the-counter and prescription medicine needs. Take advantage of their drive-up window, curbside, and delivery services. The health of you and your family is their priority. Make the switch to Mitch, located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 and 9 to noon on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and make sure to follow them on Facebook. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. There we go. Back here on the Three Rivers Meat Company pregame show is we're about 16 minutes away from opening kickoff. Uh, give you a quick rundown in the standings in Region 1 AA. Worth and Cook are both 2 0 in region play. Fitzgerald is 1 0. Berrien is at 1 1. Sumter County 0 oh 1. And Dodge County and Jeff Davis both at 0 oh 2. Uh, Jeff Davis and Dodge first met back in 1957. That game ended in a 13-13 tie. The Jackets have only won one game out of eight in eight tries against Dodge County. 1-6-1 and one is the overall series record. And the last time these two teams met, Chris, was in the first round of the 2018 state playoffs. The game Dodge won 39-21, and we had a monsoon that hit right before kickoff. I do remember that. It was uh – <laughs> standing room only uh, mm-hmm. on the sidelines with an ankle deep water. Yep. Uh, very all the tough. water, all the water drained to our sideline. That's it. It was, it was. You couldn't find anywhere but under the water to stand. Mm-hmm. And um, with that being said, you know it was a very tough game, and that score was not indicative of how that game was played. Um, but it was a very good contest between those two teams. Mm-hmm. Two bad conditions, um, and so uh, you know it's. We're looking. We're looking tonight to get that first victory. So, um, I, I'm excited to see uh, what we're going to do. We've got some of our key players back. Right. They're getting close to full strength. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's it's we're excited tonight. Fitzgerald is it worth another Region One AA action? And Barron County is at Sumter County. Cook has the week off this week, and we'll give you. A, let's go and get your rundown on tonight's starters, and Chris will give you the. Starting lineup for the Jacket defense. Yeah, let me find it here, Jim. There you go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> wrong, wrong color page. Yep. There we go. Start on defense. Our defensive ends for tonight, both are seniors. Number 33, Ty Weaver, and number 9, Amarian Mitchell. Defensive tackle tonight is sophomore, number 62, Ian McDaniel. Nose guard is senior, number 75, William Cravey. Both outside linebackers in the starting tonight are freshmen. Number two, Carter Galbraith. Number five, Demo- that's a typo. Number five, Demonte Deeds is a senior. Okay. 
uh, inside linebackers, number 10, Peyton Laney is a senior, and number 22, Carter Mullis is a junior. We're excited to call his name back on the starting lineup. Absolutely. Both cornerbacks, number three, Jude Worthington is a sophomore, number 17, Elijah Phillips is a junior, and your free safety tonight is number six, Terrence Clements is a senior. Starting for the Yellow Jackets on offense, across the offensive line, left tackle, number 75, senior, William Cravey. At left guard, number 53, a junior, Brian Reyes. The center, number 66, also a junior, Trey Ray. At right guard, senior, number 65, Lane Powell. And at right tackle, junior, number 70, Lewis Baker. Another junior, Wesley Brown, number 18, will be at your tight end position. Your wide receiver starting tonight will be sophomore, number three, Jude Worthington. Your wing backs, both seniors, number six, Terrence Clemens. And number 10, Peyton Laney. At fullback will be sophomore, number 23, Gavin Coleman. And your starting quarterback, number 16, sophomore, Colby Beach. And those are your starting lineups for tonight's game against the Dodge County Indians. And, Chris, uh, uh, Dodge County is a team that uh, they got, uh, for the most part of the year, they've relied on basically a couple of guys, number 15, Duke Johnson, uh, and number two, running back Laramie Mitchell. But understand Johnson is out with a shoulder separation that he suffered last week against Worth County. Uh, so uh, looks like either Laramie Mitchell will step over to into the quarterback spot or maybe it, we'll see some of the freshman number 18, Landon Sheffield. Yeah, it's going to be um, mm-hmm. a, a, a fill-in spot for them. you, mm-hmm. you got a senior. Uh, then you got one that has saw some time in Sheffield that's a freshman. Uh, coach is probably going to rotate them in and out. Um, you know, the Johnson kid's a big loss for them. He is a, a, a threat to be uh, back in the backfield. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, they've got some other guys that are doing pretty good. Mitchell, if you have to move him to quarterback, you're going to lose him from that running back spot. Mm-hmm. But they've also got a sophomore that's not have, not doing bad job back there with Raphael Howard. All right. And so um, it, it's going to be interesting to see what their thought is against us. Um, you know, they like to ground and pound a little bit, but they mm-hmm. will also air it out. And, um, you know, that, that does a little bit concerning, but if you have to change quarterbacks, sometimes that uh, that timing is off. So And they, uh, they, they do try to stretch the field and run you sideline to sideline. They've got both. Uh, Mitchell has a, has a great speed. If he steps in at the quarterback, it would be almost like a wildcat type option. But Johnson was also a running threat as he led the team with, right at 580 yards rushing. Mitchell uh, second on the team in rushing with 255 yards. Those two together counted for uh, 13 touchdowns rushing. Uh, So that tells you what kind of potent uh, threats those two are. Uh, But uh, you mentioned Raphael Howard, number 20, will come in. Uh, If if Mitchell starts at quarterback, then Raphael Howard will be in, and and basically it's going to be a lot of read option. From the, from the quarterback position and seeing him fake the handoff and keep a lot and try to stretch it to the corner. And I tell you, Jim, read option is going to be mm-hmm. tough. We got our, both outside linebackers. Are fr- uh, well, we got uh, Galbraith mm-hmm. is a freshman who's been playing above. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, we watch him play on the field. He does not appear, does not carry himself as a freshman. Then you got Lamonte Deeds who's worked himself into a starting spot as mm-hmm. a senior. Um, but the read option is tough for those guys to defend because of you got to make sure you play your rules right, and right. depending upon what rules we have in place on the stunts and different defense, they could change up. Mm-hmm. And if that quarterback's coming down the line, he decides he's going to pull it or pitch it or keep it. You know that guy's got to make a tough decision right there in in open space. So, uh, and I know our coaches has a great game plan in place for that, but that is a lot of rules that we've got to follow our responsibilities tonight. Well, uh, this is the. Three Rivers Meat Company pregame show. We're going to take another timeout, get some words from our fine sponsors. We'll be back after a two-minute timeout. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you're looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets. 
Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640 or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, Call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Dr. Kirkman Syak and his health care professionals at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic care about their patients. The Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic offers prompt health care for acute sicknesses and treatments for a wide range of non-emergency illnesses and injuries. To make an appointment, call 912-375-4884 or visit them at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets and God bless from Dr. Kirk Munsiak and his team at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. Back here on the Three Rivers of Meat Company pregame show as we're about six and a half minutes from kicking off tonight's action between the Jeff Davis Yellow Jackets and the Dodge County Indians. We are had a great night tonight. We've got wreck night um, with about 200 kids down on the field. Our, uh, our Southern Eye Care sideline reporter Josh Horton, who's also our recreation director, doing a tremendous job. I don't know if, Josh, if you're listening in down there, uh, uh, talk to us a little bit and tell us about uh, rec night here. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's a little uh, wound up with all his kids down there, but uh, we'll, try, we'll get, him, uh, get him caught up here a few minutes. He's, he's done a great job uh, taking over at the rec department. He's um, done a fantastic job out there. And uh, I, I talked to him earlier this year as he uh, uh, was trying to uh, get set up for this football season, and he had so many kids signed up. He was trying to find enough helmets, and uh, a lot of the – He's calling me just a second. Okay. Got you. you got a lot of the um, – A lot of, you know, a lot of supply chain issues and uh, had to work to really – It's on. That's what it. We're gonna pause here just a minute. Got some technical difficulties. We're still here at uh, the field. We're trying to get Josh to work with us. Uh, Mike's not on. Um, or it is, oh, it's like we've got a short wire. There we go. Oh. Jim, we got it popping. Hold on. No, it's popping off and on. Hold on a second. We apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Just got a cord that's not connected correctly. Josh, you try it again. It's just still cutting in and out, Jim. But as you can see, we've got the rate department cheerleaders ready to roll. We got the yellow jackets lined up behind the banner right now. 
getting ready to make their entrance as the captains walk out. The captains for tonight's team uh, game for Dodge County is Demarion Simmons, senior, number six. Number 14, Carson Jones, also a senior. Number 54, Brian Hall, senior. And number 60, Clay Lee, also a senior. For your Jeff Davis Yellow Jackets, tonight's captains. Number six, Terrence Clemens, num senior. Number 10, senior, Peyton Laney. Sophomore, number 22, Carter Mullis. Senior, number 47, Landon Robertson. Those are the captains for tonight's game as they're walking out to center field to get ready for the coin toss. As you see those group of young individuals down there, what will happen is the football team will lead through the banner with the rec department teams running out behind the high school varsity team. You see the little girls cheering on with the varsity cheerleaders. After they all come on the field and do their little thing, then they will be escorted off the field so that they will not be in danger at tonight's game but get to enjoy this great experience. As you can see, we're ready for the coin toss. Both teams have introduced themselves. Shook hands. Official is getting ready, talking about who's going to call what. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. We had a little technical difficulty, and we'll try to check in with Josh here in just a moment to see if he's uh, we got this problem cleared with his mic. Nope, he's still shaking his head down there. Okay. All right. We're good. I will. All right, we, we're hey, still. Hey, Jim, I'll pass it on to you, let you call okay. the, the to toss and the <laughs> All right, so we got the uh, captains in and uh, meeting in the middle of the field. The official flips the coin, and we'll be looking at. Uh, it looks like he's talking to Dodge County. So Dodge County has won the toss. They're going to defer to the second half. Jeff Davis will receive the opening kickoff, and we'll let them. Line them up which way, which way we're going to go. So Jeff Davis will receive, and we're moving from our uh, right to left or from the field house towards the scoreboard. And we'll be take a 60 second break here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at their location at 118 Ottawa Hall Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets! Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Back here at the Pinelands is where we're getting set for the opening kickoff. Just completed the Three Rivers Meat Company pregame show. Jeff Davis in their gold jerseys with the navy blue numbers trimmed in white, white pants. The navy blue helmets with the interlocking JD. Dodge County in white jerseys and pants with red numbers, red helmets. And Jackets will be receiving the opening kickoff as Dodge will have the Mitch's Pharmacy kickoff coming up here to get us started here. George Jackson will tee it up for the Yellow Jackets. Terrence Clemens, Elijah Phillips back deep for Jeff Davis. Kicked it on the ground. It's going to be check, taken check, check, check. by an up man at the 30-yard line. And that's where the Jackets will go to work. First and 10. So I think we hopefully got our problem solved with our field mic. 
And so Jeff Davis, first and 10 at the, their own, they marked it at the 31. So Jackets will go to work there. And Chris, we're going to see possibly some different look for the Yellow Jackets tonight. Yeah, Jim, uh, it's going to be exciting if, uh, with what we've been heard, what we've been heard, yeah. what we've heard. Starting with a single wing look, Terrence Clemens and Carter Mullis in the back. They will get a whistle before the snap and got Dodge County offsides. You also had a uh, power back kind mm -hmm. of, in essence, up in front, the lead block there. Uh, big deal there. Gives us kind of an extra blocker mm -hmm. to help those guards. Um, you know, last week we were having a little bit of an issue with the defensive line getting through. Right. So, so you've got uh, – You've got Clements and Mullis in the backfield. Sorry about that. <laughs> hmm. Gavin Coleman up, Peyton Laney on the wing set here. We run direct snap to Clements. Clements is going to be hit right about the 35-yard line. He's going to get a gain of maybe a yard up to the 37. I'm going to mark him at the 36 for no gain. It'll be second down and five. By chance, got another one in. Mm -mm. Sorry. No, you good. Jackets come to the line. A trail sellers and a tight split to the far side. Ball on the far hash. When the shotgun snap, Mullis Clemens in the backfield. Gavin Coleman in a blocking back position up front. Going to snap it to Clemens. He's trying to work the right side. He's got the first down. And, and Dallas more. Neal Go in. He breaks through the midfield, but he stepped out of bounds just as he broke containment there. He's going to be into Dodge territory all now the way down there. 50, Jim. Okay. The, the official right here has been 50. So when he did step out of bounds at midfield, so it'll be a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Big 14-yard run there, Jim. I thought he got away. But uh, evidently, when he stepped over that lineman, he got uh, he stepped out of bounds. So first and ten, Jackets. This new look offense running the single wing, where you basically got two guys in a shotgun formation, both with their hands out, and the center can snap it to either one. Sellers are going to come split wide to the near side. We stay with the single wing and we jump off sides, and that's going to cost the Jackets five yards. So move it back across midfield into Jacket territory to the 45, where it'll be first and 15. Colby Beach now checking in, so we're going out of the single wing into a more traditional offensive set. Clemens is going to come in a slot near side as Sellers goes wide. Beach out of the shotgun with Laney in the backfield, a bit of a high snap. Going to Throw balls tipped and caught by Laney, and he's going to push forward and get close to the 44-yard line, 46-yard line, rather. That's a way to be patient there by Laney instead of keep running down the field. He saw the ball tipped, put, uh, paused, and uh, was able to wait for that ball to come down and keep the defenders away. So they got it at the 47. will be second down and about seven to go. Just underway here. Big Region 1AA matchup with Dodge County. Five, six. They got back to the single wing formation of Mullis and the gun looking for the snap. Going to snap it directly to Clemens. He's got blockers in front, but Dodge County pursues well, and it's going to be a little or no gain on the play that time. So it'll be third down in seven. Dodges. Doesn't act like they've been caught by surprise here. They've reacted well to the multiple looks we're giving them on offense right now. Well, Jim, I will say mm -hmm. you know, the biggest change to it is the the, the gun snap off mm -hmm. of it because uh, you know our formations are still very similar, so it's not much of a major adjustment as far as formations. But the play calling off of it definitely is going to be causing some issues. But Dodge has just been able to stay at home right now. Seller splits wide to the right. Ball on the near side hash. Beach out of the shotgun with two wing backs. Going to send a man in motion. Beach rolling near side. Looking to throw. Too tall as he's trying to hit Sellers downfield. And that's going to be bring up fourth down for the Yellow Jackets. And punting team is going to come on. Carter Galbraith in to punt for the Jackets. 
And it's going to be Laramie Mitchell who will drop back to return the punt for the Indian dangerous return man here. Yeah, we're going to probably try to pooch it away, punt, punt it away from him here so we'll get a good yellow jacket roll. Ball in the middle of the field, and he's set up on the far hash. Galbraith checked that. It's Carter Mullis with a straight ahead kick. It's really good. Going to hit it the 10, roll get down inside the 5. Going to roll it down to about the 2-yard line. Big punt by right. Mullis to be able to pull it up there at the 2. Got it at the, to the 2. A 45-yard punt and roll by Carter Mullis. And Dodge County is going to get their first possession deep in the hole with 9-18 remaining here in the first period of play. Uh, let's see if I can do this. No score in the ball game as Dodge now working deep, having out of their end zone. Laramie Mitchell is the quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's going to take the snap, keep it himself. Got a whistle before the snap false and a false start. So that'll cost them a whole yard there, Chris. I know. That's, you know, you hate to have those type of penalties down there, but at least it's half distance to the goal, so you ain't got to stress too much. Let's check in with our Southern Air Care sideline reporter, Josh Horton, see if we got him working now. I think I'm on now. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, Rick, Rick Knott has been wide open. Uh, been an awesome start to the night so far. First and 11 for the Indians as they get another flag. Half of a yard. I move them back to the half yard line. Yeah. Well, it's mine. It seems like mine's down. Thank you. How's that? Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that for a minute. All right. 11 and a half yards on first down for the Mitchell. It's going to take it straight ahead. He's going to burst through the line. He's going to get close to the 10 yard line before the Jackets wrestle him down. They're going to give him the 10, so a, a good game there. It's going to be just a yard shy, about back a couple of yards shy of the first time. be second down and eight. They backed him up to the nine there. That was uh, Mitchell. Lar that was number two, Laramie Mitchell on the carry. Second down, two. Going to run it to the wide, running back, coming wide side. He's got the first down and out of bounds. That was... Demarion Gordon, number one on the carry for the Indians, and they're going to have a first down uh, at about the 13-yard line, looks like. Yeah, he he come around, was well, a little patient there, let one of our guys run past him and then cut back. Uh, going to mark him at the 18. Check that, the 18. Game of nine. So first and 10 now for Dodge County as they've gotten it off the goal line. Great Carter Mullis punt, put them back deep in their own territory. Mitchell, quick throw out to the Big flat tackle. tackle. Number two, the little freshman, Carter Galbraith, comes up and takes him out as he catches it. If we could get that on air as an instant replay from the Interstate Credit Union, he catches it as soon as he catches it. Carter, Carter with a great open field tackle on number four there. So the loss of five on the play be second down 15. Good read by the. Outside linebacker Galbraith on that. Mitchell going to hand it off to the running back, trying to work far side. He's going to get up to, back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a little bit more across the 20 to the 21. It'll bring up third down and about seven, it looks like. Carter Mullis over there leading the swarm of jackets that brought him down. Uh, great job by Carter to get in, in a position to make a play. I give him the 22. So be third and seven. And if the Jackets can hold here, they should come away with great field position. They're going to send trips to the near side of the field. Pistol set. Going to hand it straight ahead, and we hit him and knock him down. It looked like Peyton Laney got the first contact in there, and Lamonte Deeds came in to finish him off. Be no gain on that play. Now bring up fourth down in a punting situation. Here we are on the Interstate Credit Union Instant Replay. You see the stuff at their contact, Carter Mullis and uh, Peyton Laney right there filling the hole. Brings up fourth and long five. 
George Jackson in to punt for the Jackets. Elijah Phillips back deep. He's going to drift back to about the Jacket 40. Big stand for the Yellow Jackets. A little bit of a low snap. But gets a high short kick. Get away. Get the away. Jacket 45. And Dodge is going to cover it at about the 47. So that's where the Jackets will take over in Dodge territory. 25 yard punt. So Jeff Davis gets their second possession, 638 remaining in the first period. Game's moving pretty quick. Both offenses mm -hmm. running pretty hard. We'd like to take a moment to recognize some game sponsors, Silas Worth Monument and C&H Creative Flooring. First and 10, Jackets at the Dodge 46-yard line. Mullison Clemens. In the backfield, Carter Mullis is going to take the direct snap. He's going to take it straight ahead, and he's got four or five yards in there. He's going to have him inside the 45, looks like to the 43. So it'll be a pickup of three. Second down and seven. Mullis stays in the game, gets the play from Coach Helton. And, you know, just his athletic ability. I talked with Coach Helton last night. He said just trying to get the best players on the field. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's what's going to get you where you got to go. Ball on the far hash. Single wing set. Get a flag. And procedure call against the Yellow Jackets. And that one really hurts right there. It does. We're up right in, line, in line, ready to go. And so let's go back to 48. 48, going to make it second down and 12. And even with this change in the offense, we still are a team that doesn't need to play behind the chains. No, we don't. And it's Right now, it's like both teams are trying so hard that penalty bugs got them bit. Second and 12 for the Yellow Jackets. Ball on the far hash. Everybody packed in tight. Clemens and Mullis in the backfield. Sellers took it. Laramie Sellers on the carry. He's going to take it to the wide side of the field. He's going to be inside the 45 to the 44. Latrell Sellers with a big carry there. Latrell Sellers, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, trying to get us across the middle of the field. All right, he popped up. Laney went down just a minute um, on your uh, yeah. Jeff Davis walk-in clinic injury report, but he's popped back up. They are going to blow the whistle. I think he might have to come out. But um, you know, there was no stoppage in play. I'm trying to see what the officials are blowing the whistle for. They've got it at the 43, so it'll be third down and seven. Sellers brought us back in to um, striking range. Looking at Peyton Lane, he is kind of a little bit of a, maybe of a slight limp there. Yeah, Wesley Brown, the tight end, is going to split out. And we're going to have Sellers along with Mullis in the backfield. Sellers is going to get snapped. Going to run the inside handoff. Back. Laney, took, Laney it, took it. He's going to get to the 41. Going to be shy of the first down. Only a pickup of a couple there. It's going to be fourth down and about five. And let's see what Coach Helton decides to do here. Fourth and five. 444 remaining in the opening period. Do we try to pin them in deep or do we? Uh... Now he's going to send the punt team on. Mullis will go back deep to punt. And Laramie Mitchell will drop back to receive the punt, and he'll set up at the middle of Dodge 10-yard line. He's this punt. time he's going to the middle of the field. Ball's on the far hash. Uh-oh, got one running on late. What we got to do? We're delay a game. We'll get a delay a game, and... It'll back us up five rather than waste a timeout right there. That could almost help you a little bit. Coach Helton's just trying to get everybody to calm down right there. Yep. We had a little miscommunication on the sideline. Uh, nothing really. This this penalty here, Jim, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't really stress us. It actually gives Mullis a little bit more room to work to pin that ball down deep. Um, doesn't have to try to finesse it quite as much. So now Dodge is going to send another man back deep along with Mitchell. Number five. That is 
Bryce McDuffie. So they're going to try to take away the getting a good roll out of Mullis with the rugby style kick down the far side. Going to hit it at the 12-yard line. Mitchell's going to take it at the 10. He's working to the near side. There's a flag in there. It's He's going to cross the 30 and be brought down. It's a block in the back there, Jim. By Jonathan Bohannon. And we got a man down. Slow to get up. He's up walking there. It's Eli Turner who's going to come limping to the sidelines. But the flag is going to negate it. that decent return. It's going to be – they're going to have to start back near their 10-yard line. Yeah, that was a big block in the back there. Um, you saw that kid mm -hmm. come flying forward. Uh, so, helps out Jeff Davis. Going to back him up. And they'll start at the 12-yard at the 12 12. line. 3.54 remaining in the opening period. So, Dodge, again, having to work deep out of their own territory. We'll get our... We'll get our sponsors here when we can, but this is a quick game. Everybody's on and off the field, not giving us much time to get those breaks in. Shotgun set. Mitchell's going to take it. He's going to hand it off to the running back. He's going to work inside. Still driving hard in there. The Jackets gang tackling after four or five yard again. That was Gordon on the carry. That's no, yeah. And I'll tell you, Jim, mm -hmm. that was one of those situations. They're going to spot him with goodness well, gracious. They're going to spot him at 18. So that would be a pickup of six on the play. Holy cow. Actually, but, uh, they'll make it a 17. Be second down and five. Gordon behind Mitchell in a pistol set. Now he steps up beside him. Mitchell's going to keep it working far side. He's got the corner, and he's got a first down out across the 25. We talked about it, Jim. You know, mm -hmm. Mitchell's a dangerous running back, and moving the quarterback gives him a little bit more time to see with that ball in his hands. It backed him up to the 24 there. That's still a first down for Dodge County. So they've got a fresh set of downs with 3.03 remaining in the first period. Ball at the Indian 24. Two men come to the near side, one to the far side. Got a covering. Got a covering. Dropping back, looking got to throw. Got a covering. Under pressure, steps out. Got a man wide open on this. Complete at the 30. And runs through a tackle at the 45 and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Sorry. A pass to Williams on the near side. And you read it, Chris. He was wide open. Nobody picked him up as the quarterback rolled left and then threw back right. So a first and 10 for the Indians and 21 yards on the pickup that time on the pass play. 245. Clock stopped. The play went out of bounds. Now they're going to have trips to the far side of the field. Ball on the near side hash. Pistol set now. Running back moves up. Sellers going to give it to the mm -hmm. running back coming near side. We've hit him and wrapped him up. That was Raphael Howard on the carry that time. First time we've called his name tonight. He's going to pick up a couple of yards to the 47, but second down and eight. Two twenty-five and counting here in the opening period. No score in the ball game. Dodge on the move, though, as they started this drive back at their own 12. They're now out to the 47. Trips to the far side of the field. Ball stays on the near side hash. Got a new quarterback in this time. Now throw a quick wide receiver screen out to the far side. Complete. Oh, and big stiff arm. Stiff arm, and he's going to get a good gain. Be short of the first down. Is it going to be about midfield where they're going to mark him out? So you pick up you, a three on the play. That's Landon Sheffield, freshman, coming in. And first big play on your freshman to put him into a swing pass to uh, number four. Well, Sheffield staying in the game. Gordon is set up in a pistol set beside him. Now the ball's to the far hash, and the trips come to the near side. He's more of a throwing quarterback than a running quarterback. Look, best communication there as he looked to hand off. Nobody was there, and the Jackets are going to swarm him under. Back at the 49, a loss of one on the play. Be, be fourth down now in about six. And see what the Indians decide to do here. 
They give him, they do give him back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. So the ball spotted at midfield, fourth down and about six. We'll see the instant replay there from Interstate Credit Union. So Mitchell back to punt. Elijah Phillips back to the Jackets as he's going to stand at about the 10 yard line. It's a kick away, high driving kick. Phillips is going to let it take a bounce. And finally retrieve it and go down back inside the 10 yard line. That was a dangerous play right there. Jim, I think he's not, I think he might have thought it bounced off our guy's foot right there was uh, blocking because uh, mm-hmm. it, it looked like it kicked up off of one of those guys. Right. And so I think that's the only reason he went and tried to make that play is because of the, the fear of it being, on, it's on the seven, the fear of it being on the, um, off of our guy. On the- Punt to the seven-yard line, so a 43-yard punt. A minute and three to go. And 103 remaining in the opening period. And Jackets have to start deep in their territory at their own seven this time. Dodgers had to work out of their end zone. The trail Sellers comes out to the near side. Car- high snap and a whistle before the, before the play. And I think they signaled offside dodge. Be nice right here. Jim, I do have an update real quick. Okay. Uh, I'll try to get us some more, but uh, McCarty's Auto Parts score check, Fitzgerald and Worth at the end of one. Fitzgerald seven, Worth zero. So it is offside against Dodge, so that's going to move us out to the 12-yard line. We'll be first down in five. That's their second offside penalty tonight. We'll take it, though. Try to keep you updated on scores from around the area tonight on our McCarty Auto Park scoreboard. I'll work on what I can get. But Carter Mullis is going to come in a slot to the near side. Latrell Sellers splits out wide. Kobe Beach out of the shotgun with Clemens in the backfield. Going to pass, hit Carter Mullis on the inside slant, and that's going to be complete for first down. Just a quick slant by Mullis out of the slot, and he's going to be all the way out to the 21 One, yard line. Nine yards on that play. So that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Your score after one. No score. Let's take a 60 second timeout. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over the road tractor trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. They offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, You're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from Memorial Designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one of a kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. First and 10 Yellow Jackets as we start the second period of play. Ball at their own 21-yard line. You might have an uh, an update from any Mm -hmm. of the other... uh, games right around us um, as what is it Berrien and Sumner have mm-hmm. not posted a score yet Applin and Toombs have not posted a score yet um, Pierce is open this week man in motion far side beach rolling looking downfield though going to hit downfield way overthrown Latrell Sellers was streaking down the hash had a couple of steps on the defender but could not connect, overthrown. It'll be second down and 10. McCarty Auto Parts scoreboard, Johnson County 7, Bacon County nothing. Wheeler County 7, Hawkinsville nothing. Coffee County and Bradwell Institute all tied up 
That's seven apiece. Sellers in on a tight split to the near side. We go back to the single wing. Mullis is going to take the block. Clemens on the run. He's going to turn the corner on the near side, be run out of bounds across the 25. Number six. About the 26. So pick up a five on the play. Clemens. Bring up third down and five. This is what we thought was going to happen tonight, mm -hmm. Jim. Very physical game. Back and forth here between two teams that are seemingly very evenly matched. Second and five. Carter Galbraith brought the play into the huddle. I think he was sitting back there next to Clemens last play and called a snap. He is. He's right back there with the Sellers this time. So Sellers and Galbraith. Galbraith takes the snap. He's going to try to run it. He's going to be dropped at the 25 for a loss of one on the play. Bring up fourth okay. down and long. So being fourth and six, and the Jackets are going to have to punt it away. Carter Galbraith in now punting this time. Yeah, Mullis is out right now getting his uh, ankle rewrapped. Two men back. We got offsides we got on those. Got a whistle, and I think we jumped a little bit ahead of the snap there. Had a couple so of bodies move. Had to punt it from back, move us back to the 20. And we'll bring up another punt. And Dodge County is going to come away from this with pretty good field position. That where they got two guys back like a while ago. Um, they're, the two return guys are talking which way path they're going to take, trying to stay split out here and block for each other. Mitchell and McDuffie are the two backs. Galbraith again to kick, rugby-style kick, and another flag. Come on. Wow. And that he hit that one pretty good. And that's going to move us back to the 15. And you know that's driving Coach Helton crazy, and he's sending somebody in from the sidelines there to Try to get this thing straightened out. So once again, Dodge will come away with even better field position probably here. Again, the rugby style kick gets a driving kick. Be taken at the jacket 48 by Mitchell. Going to hit Good and drop down. Terrence Clemens. Knocked down in just inside the 40 at the 39. Terrence Clemens and Jonathan Bohannon on a big open field tackle to only give him a 10 yard gain from the 49 or nine yard gain from the 48 to the 39. Big play. That was 33 yards on that punt by that we see on instant replay. Big punt. You see Clemens coming in and Bohannon coming to help. Right there, both of them make a good open field tackle to stop him with, a, with only a nine yard gain. So Dodge is gonna start at the Jackets 39, first and 10. Got a pistol formation and a turn and pitch it deep to the running back. Trying to work near side will be Gordon. He's going to get a good gain out across the. Got a flag down right here too, I believe. Gordon, Gordon got a hold. What he's calling this dude down here needs mm -hmm. to put his flag up. Take it from him for a couple of plays. <laughs> Goodness well, gracious! Maybe, well, we we definitely we need that one. Yeah, but, but it was a, he made it to the. He'll mark it back from the line of scrimmage. So I move the bat, ball back to the jacket 49. So be first and 20. So there'll be no play there, basically, since he didn't gain any yardage. 10-31 remaining in the half. Still no score in the ball game. But Dodge starting in Jackets territory this time. Two receivers to either side of the formation. Mitchell rolling, looking to throw, throwing on the run, and overshoots his man on the far sideline. That's a, he's got enough pressure there. We do a great job in coverage as uh, he's trying to hit number eight, which is Jabray Graham and um, or Jabba Graham, but uh, doesn't make it complete. So that's going to bring up second 
and 20 here from the 49-yard line. Dodge still trying to do something, but uh, trying to roll out past it. You've got John Mitchell back in at quarterback. Receive his far side, one to the near side. Mitchell going to fake it, keep it, looking runner in oh. this side, cut side of it, and uh, run out of bounds on the far side at about the 45-yard line. All right, we need this official to go to the other side because <laughs> one of our guys just got tackled. He sure did, and they no flag on that one. Yeah. That's going to bring a third down and still long, though, as the Jackets pursued well. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the 46, only a pickup of three three on the play. Who ran that one to him? I'm sorry, I was oh, too that watch. Was, that was Mitchell, number two. I got you. I was watching our guy get tackled over mm-hmm. there. So third and long, third and 18 for the Indians. Still scoreless here in the first half. Both defenses are doing a great job here of trying to uh, keep this under control. Dodge is going to put everybody in tight. Mitchell going to give it off to Gordon. Gordon's going to try to work far side. He's going to get back to about the original line of scrimmage. He's going to bring up fourth down and 10 here. I'll mark him right at the line. So that was the Austin, 39. Austin Daniel was wrapped him up around his legs. He had a host of yellow jackets around the top of him. But Daniel was able to grab hold of the legs and hold on there. Amari and Mitchell checking into the game at the defensive end. Jonathan Bohannon get a breathe on the sideline. Fourth down and 10, and they look like they're going to go for it here. Mitchell in a pistol set. He's got Gordon. Behind him, everybody packed in tight for Dodge. Going to run a deep pitch to Gordon. Gordon cuts it back inside. He's going to be close to a first down. He's going to be short. And they're going to – depends on the spot. here. going to get a favorable spot on this side. The other uh, far side guy is going to have him about a half a yard yeah, short. far side guys gave him on 30. Our guy over here is – walk back now. They put him at the 30, Jim. That will be a turnover on down. So, Jackets. Get it over on downs here as they oh, he, squeezed him down with just a yard to spare. He made a great cut as he came through the line of scrimmage there, but Yellow Jacks did not over pursue and was able to tackle him just shy of the first down marker. First and 10, Jeff Davis. We'll thank our network sponsor, Jeff Davis Hospital, the Breezley Group for our streaming sponsor. Three Rivers Meat Company, who sponsored our pregame show, and we'll have the Altamaha Bank and Trust halftime show coming up here shortly. And only had the opening kickoff for Mitch's Pharmacy kickoff tonight, and no EP American footwear touchdowns as of yet. I tell you, this, this game's happening so fast, mm-hmm. it's hard to take cut away here. One receiver split to the far side, putting Laney in motion. Going back to there throw. He is. Got a man near side. And complete at the 48 and run out of bounds. Backside throw there to Wesley Brown as he's able to go deep. Let's watch that on our inter, uh, Interstate Credit Union instant replay. Beach fakes, runs everybody left, turns back, backside, throws to number 18, Brown, for a first down down to the Dodge County 44-yard line. Big play for the Yellow Jackets. That went uh, 36 yards. Yeah, I need some help on that. <laughs> At 26 yards, I'm sorry. 26. No, 36. I'm sorry. We'll get it right. First and 10 jackets in the Indian Territory. Beach takes a high snap. Quick throw over the middle. Complete. Well, that's Peyton Laney on the catch inside the 40 to the 39. It was 26, Jim. I mean, the uh, yardage on that last yeah, play. 26, okay. So, be second down and five. Who made that last run there? That was Kate Laney on the catch. Another pass? Another pass. So, five yard there. I can catch up on yardage in a second. Two That's receivers it. go to the far side. You got Elijah Phillips out there. Beach out of the snap. Going to throw far side. Complete Clements. out there to Clemens. He breaks a tackle. He's down the far sideline. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Colby Beach to Terrence Clemens for 39 yards. Jim, when was the last time we run three pass plays in a row? I can't ever remember that. Here it is on replay. Does a great job. Clemens runs a little flat out and then breaks one tackle and he's gone. That was a great block. I'm trying to see who it was. Elijah Phillips it looks like. 
made one fantastic block to get him down to the end zone. That was Beach to Clemens. For the EP American Footwear touchdown to put the Jackets up 6-0. We got the spread formation here as we run a man in motion. Look back to the sidelines. Now we close the swinging gate, and Fabian Valdelamar is going to come on to attempt the extra point. He's 9 for 9 on the season at point afters. Hope I didn't just jinx him here. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a low snap, but Beach gets it down, and the kick is good. And with 7-18 remaining in the first half, Jeff Davis 7, Dodge County nothing. 60-second timeout on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Make the switch to Mitch, not only for your prescription needs, but also for your gift needs. Visit Designs and More by Brandy, located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop designs and more by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone, shoes by Corky, and jacket t-shirt for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're an exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Fabian Val Delamar with the Mitch's Pharmacy kickoff about to be made here. Jackets up 7-0. 7 18 remaining. Uh oh, moves over. High short kick to the far side, and it's going to sail out of bounds. And let's see if Dodge lets to take it at the 35. Jim, we were talking about before we took the break there. Mm -hmm. Three pass plays in a row. That was huge. And then the fact that we went. 37, 70 yards, mm -hmm. roughly 65 yards on passes, on three passes in a row. Clock was still running there while the ball is being spotted. So let's see, they're going to take it at the 35 and the first and 10 dodge with the Jackets. The early lead here, seven, well, let's say 6.56 now remaining. And let about 22, three seconds run off the clock. First and 10 dodge. They got trips to the near side. Going to give it off to Gordon. Gordon's trying to work ahead. He's going to be hit, brought down after a gain of about three or four. He'll be shy of the 40-yard line. And we'll mark him at the 39. So it'll be a pickup of four on the play. The second down and six. By Gordon on the carry. Gordon on the carry. Again, they go trips to the near side. Ball sitting on the far hash. Mitchell out of the gun. Drop a quick throw. Wide receiver screen near side complete. Trying to come out far side. Jackets rally. Gang tackling on the sideline just across the 40. And a flag down, which may be holding. And our fans think it was holding anyway. We got somebody that thought this all holding out there for sure. The pass was the pass gain was to the 41. And they call holding. So the pass will be, play will be negated as they're spotting it from the 38. That's where he walked up to. On where they're so going to put it. From the spot of the foul. And I move the ball all the way back to the 26. 26. Was well, spotted it at the uh, 36. Second down, about 19 to go with 6:13 remaining so in the opening timeout. period, and Dodge yeah. County is going to take a Williams Brothers timeout. 30 seconds on the field. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. At Altamaha Hall Bank and Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. 
Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altamahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We're back here at the Pinelands. Let's check in with our Southern Eye Care sideline reporter, Josh Horton. Josh, that was a beautiful pass and run by Terrence Clemens there. Guys, it was. Uh, Beach is beat right there. Those last three passes were, were right on the money, as they say it. Uh, looked really good composure there. Second down, 19 for the Indians as they got trips to the near side, one to the far side. They've got Sheffield in at the quarterback. He's dropping back to throw in trouble, being flushed and sacked. The tackle from behind by Ian McDaniel finally getting through. And Let's is take able. that on our instant replay. The sack there by McDaniel. Mid, I will say Mario Mitchell does a great job keeping outside leverage, makes him come back up underneath, and Mitchell wraps him up at his waist as Ty Weaver comes over the top to finish off the tackle on Sheffield. Balls at the Third. End. And 21, I guess. 24. At the 24. Third and very long. 532 remaining. Back to throw. Oh, almost, almost intercepted. And Carter Mullis had it right in his hand. Check that. No, that was uh, that was uh, Carter Galbraith that had it in his hands and couldn't hang on. And it passes incomplete and the Indians are going to have to kick it away. Big play there by the freshman to deflate that ball. Almost had it to be able to run down for there's nobody but green grass in front of him. So, been scary to see what he could have done if he had held on to it. Jackets could come away with this with some really good field position as Elijah Phillips is going to set up around his own 40. Oh, what are we doing? George Jackson in the kick. He gets a high, high kick, fair kick signal by Phillips, and he makes it, boy. He had to dance around with that one with some good hands to make that thing stick. Be inside the 35 at about the 33. Now we got the 34. And so that's where the Jackets will go to work. 42 yards on that punt with a lot of hang time. That was a big punt there. So the Jackets leading 7-0 with 523 remaining. Will have it at their own 34 on the near side hash. Moving from left to right. Latrell Sellers, Terrence Clemens going to go out to the left. Clemens in the slot. Colby Beach out of the shotgun. Check quick throw. Going to hit the man out of the backfield. Peyton Laney is going to pick up a couple before he's chopped down. Just across the 25 to the 26, or 35 to the 36, rather. That was a big tackle by J.J. Dean out there. Um, uh, scratch that, that was Demarion Simmons that came up to tackle Laney. But a very big play. Otherwise, Laney had nothing but green grass in front of him, Jim. Four fifty remaining, 18, 17 seconds remaining on the play clock. Sellers is going to come to the near side. Ball on the far hash. Clemens is going to come in a slot near side. Jackets hustle to the line. Flip Laney over the formation. Two backs in the backfield. Going to swing pass out to Laney, and he's going to be hit and dropped right there at the 34-yard line. A loss of a couple on the play. This Dodge sniffed that one out quickly. They did, Jim, and uh, looks like they were calling it. We fumbled it, but nobody threw their bag, so not sure that uh, well, what happened there with the official signals. But um, going to put it back at the 34. We'll be third down and 10. Four twenty-five remaining, and. We'll Clock stopped. Flag on the play. That was a late call. And calling on us. It'll be a motion against the Jackets. We have plenty of time to go blow the whistle and get going. 
That'll be moving all the way back to the 29 where it's going to be third down and 15. Now the clock runs with 420 to go in the ball in the first half. Be taking you to the Altamaha Bank and Trust halftime show. Let you listen in to the Pride of the Pinelands marching band during our halftime activities. Sellers is going to go wide. Clements in a slot. Beach. And a flag again. And we just, you know, we, you only had a couple of days to put this change of offense in, and timing's not there. So make it third and even longer. And now you, you've had an opportunity to try to add to your lead by getting pretty decent field position, but we've gone backwards. 7 nothing, Jeff Davis. 4-0-1 remaining in the half. The penalties penalty. are, yeah, penalties are mounting up, aren't they? Seventh penalty for 35 yards. I mean, they haven't been the big penalties, but still seven of them. Laney goes in motion across the formation. Beach takes a snap, rolls to the right, looking to throw downfield. Got a man wide open. Sellers completed the catch. 50. Snatched that one out of the air with his two hands, and he's finally brought down around the 30-yard line. Big play by the trail. Sellers, a great catch. And here we are on the Interstate Credit Union instant replay. Watch Beach fake this here. Does a good job. This throws back, throws a dart across the middle. Sellers puts both hands up. Is able to catch it all the way down to the 31-yard line for a huge gain. 45 yards on the play. As he just reached up at right at midfield and just snatched that one out of the air. I thought it was going to be overthrown. Yeah, I was worried about that, but Jim, he did a fantastic job bringing that ball down. 328. As Sellers goes left, Clemens in the slot. Beach in the backfield. Going to fake it, throw it over. Got a man wide open. Terrence Clemens complete and stumbles and falls at the 10-yard line. Well, if he could keep his feet, he could have walked to the end zone. 21 yards on that play, Jim. 153 yards total passing here in the first half for the Yellow Jackets. Wow. Timeout on the field. Williams Brothers trucking timeout. We're going to take a look at, at the instant replay there from Interstate Credit Union. 30-second timeout. This is Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Back here at the Pinelands, Jim Sewell here in the booth alongside Chris Davis, Josh Horton roaming the sidelines as for our Southern Eye Care sideline reporter. And, Josh, that was a great catch by Carter Galbraith back at midfield. Because yes, it was, and we said said it earlier, that was from Beach to be able to stay in the pocket like that, read the field, read the defense. Uh, Dodge is having a tough time adjusting to it. First and ten jackets, first and goal jackets from the eight-yard line. Yeah, Jim, that was, that was a huge catch by um, Sellers there mm-hmm. in the middle of the field. The freshman, nonetheless, coming up with both hands, snagging it down on that huge pass play of 45 yards. Then follow that up with a 21-yard pass play to Terrence Clemens across the middle. Now we're down within red zone. Elijah Phillips is going to go out far side in the slot, going to give it to Ty Weaver, working his way inside. He's going to keep pushing the pile, pushing the pile. He's down inside the five to about the three. And they'd be second and goal from the three-yard line we as we hit the three-minute mark in the half. Big Ty Weaver gets his first carry of the night. And Jackets three. leading 7 nothing, trying to add more. Elijah Phillips is in the game at the wideout position. Trying to let the clock run here. Yeah, 10 seconds. Three and a half, two and a half left on the game clock. We'll call a timeout here, Jim. And the Jackets take a Williams Brothers 
Trucking Company. Timeout, 30-second break. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. Two twenty-four remaining in the first half. Jackets have it second down and goal from the three-yard line. Get you a quick update on the McCarty Auto Parts scoreboard. Valdosta six, Lyons three in the Battle of Valdosta. Applin County seven, Toombs County nothing. Jacket spread two to the far side. Now they flip Wesley Brown over to that side. Going to pitch it to Terrence Clemens. He's trying to find, diving to the end zone. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Terrence Clemens takes it in from three yards out. He it said on play. We got a shift go on. Dodge doesn't adjust too much. Clemens takes the ball, cuts back across the green right there, and he's in the end zone before the ball bounces out. Dodge was complaining about it a little bit, but touchdown nonetheless for Terrence Clemens from three yards out. AP American footwear for Terrence Clemens. His second touchdown of the game. His other came on the receiving end of a 39-yard pass from Colby Beach. Fabian Valdelamar in to attempt the extra point. He gets the kick up, and the kick is good. 219 remaining in the half. Jeff Davis 14. Dodge County nothing. 62nd time out on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Make the switch to Mitch for all your over-the-counter and prescription medicine needs. Take advantage of their drive-up window, curbside, and delivery services. The health of you and your family is their priority. Make the switch to Mitch, located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 and 9 to noon on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and make sure to follow them on Facebook. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. Mitch's pharmacy kickoff coming up from Fabian Val Delamar. And going to kick it high and short to the far side. Jackets down there covering it and had a chance to. We let it bounce out. We let it bounce out of bounds as we were right there with no Dodge County man around it. All T we had to do was catch it on the fly. No, I tell you, Jim, it has to hit the ground. Oh, it has to hit the ground, okay. That's why. So he, mm -hmm. our player did a great job by letting it hit. But right. then, uh, you know, that's why whenever but they also have. Uh, made it illegal from West I could read last week mm -hmm. uh, because we had this scenario happen in a game we were watching. Uh, they pushed it just like we did, but they called it in the air and it was called um, illegal touching or right. something of that mm -hmm. nature. But they've gotten rid of the high bounce right off the tee. Right, you can't so, kick it straight into the ground. Right, but it still has to hit the ground before um, or touch a player before the kicking team can recover. Dodge is going to take it where it went out of bounds at the 42 with 214 remaining. First and 10 Indians. they got everybody packed in tight. Going to get a whistle before the snap, and boy, we've had a lot of laundry on the field tonight. And that looks like they're signaling offside against the Yellow Jackets. Offside against Jeff Davis. Another one of those tough five-yard penalties. It's going to give them first and five at the 47-yard line now. Jackets up 14-0. But 
Dodge County's got great starting field position here. 47. Got the Altamaha Bank and Trust halftime show coming up. Another whistle. I think it's going to be a timeout. Based on, yep. And Dodge is going to take a Williams Brothers Trucking Company timeout. 30 seconds on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you're looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets. First down five for Dodge County at their own 47-yard line. Quick update on the McCarty Auto Parts scoreboard. Wayne County 42, Islands nothing. And, well, they Jay Bo Shaw from Rabin County has turned that Dodge County program around. Going to run a sweep to the far side, end around from the wide, from the wide out. That's number four, Williams, on the carry, and he's going to have a first down. He needed only needed five. He got about six or seven out to the jacket 45. You got a timeout here, maybe? They, they can stop the clock. They got an injured player over there, Jim. Got a Jeff Davis walk-in clinic player down on the field. He's on that the far sideline. That was number four for that, Dodge. Dodge Keegan Williams on the carry. And our training staff going to head across field to check him out. The first and 10 dodge at the jacket 45 now. Everybody packed in tight for the Indians. Mitchell out of the shotgun. Don't give it to Gordon. Trying to work near side. Gordon slips a tackle. He's got a first down out at the 35-yard line. The dodge moving. Quickly, a minute 44 remaining. 35. To the 35, a pickup of 10 and a first down. Stops the clock with a minute 42 while they reset the chains. Now the clock runs. Dodge going quickly, no huddle. Trips tight on the far side. Don't give it to Gordon. He's working again, far side. He's going to have seven or eight yards. He's got more in the... Works his way down inside the 20. To another first down. Another first down. Well, you need to get something going here. Now, spot him at 25, rather. Another 10 yard pickup by Gordon. And we've had a hard time tackling him tonight. We have, Jim. Man in motion. Mitchell's going to keep it. He's going to dive inside. Boy, That's wrap him up, go. hit him quickly. He might have got Eight a yard two. or two. They'll spot him at the uh, 23. Look at two yards on the pickup there. The Jackets defense closed quickly. They're going quickly. Under a minute to go. And he spikes the ball. Thought Stop the clock. The center. With, no, you can spike it from the shotgun. Okay. 52 seconds remaining. And the Indians have the ball at the 23. We're going to keep it right here on this timeout on the field. Williams Brothers trucking timeout. Chris, Jackets have... The biggest lead of the year, 14 points, but Dodge County threatening to cut it in half. Yeah, they are, and uh, we've done a great job. We we changed it up. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. talk about halftime stats here in a little bit, what we did. But, uh, you know, Jack's come out and have done a fantastic job adjusting and, and utilizing what we have right now. Um, Dodge, on the other hand, they're trying to pound it in here quick with under a minute left on the game clock. They got good field position from the 47, and uh, from their 47, and trying to capitalize. Right. Let me ask you a question. He ran the ball on first down to pick up two yards and spiked it, or did they call timeout? Let's call timeout before he spiked it because they still got second down on the marker. Hmm. Second down and eight, 52 seconds remaining. Trips to the near side of the field. Jacket shifting on defense. Mitchell back, straight drop, looking throw, far side, low throw. And give it to him. They catch, but he stayed inbound. The clock's running. Down to the 17 yard line. Yes, sir. First, third, and about two. Mitchell back looking to throw. He's got the man open again, far side. He's got the first down. We rally out, tackle him around the 10 yard line. 
29 seconds to go as the clock will stop temporarily for the move to change. Dodge hustling back to the line. Clock running, 26 seconds to go. On 13. And this time he does spike it at the 13. Be second and, ten, second and 10 from the 13. Stops the clock with 22 seconds. <laughs> we'll be checking in with Josh Horton for our Bank Eisler's coaches interview at the half here in just a few more seconds. Second and 10 from the 13. Mitchell dropped back, looking to throw under pressure. He ragged him and struggled him down. We're going to get collar. a horse collar as we drug him down by the shirt collar. Uh, had him flush from the pocket, and that's going to hurt. That's going to be half the distance to the goal and give them, I'm not sure if it'll be a first down, 15 seconds to go, but the worst foul? thing is it stops the clock. Let's it's see. It's a personal foul. Jim, it's at the 21 that they're going to call it, so is it half the distance but they, there? But it'll be from the from the previous spot on a personal foul in the backfield, so he'll get half the distance from the 13, which will move it to about the 7. they will put it at the 9, wind the clock with 15 to go. It's not a first down. We call and time Jackets out. take a timeout with 12 seconds to go in. Boy, Chris, this is a a barn burner coming down the field here at the close of the half. It is, Jim, and, you know, we want to keep that goose egg on the board right. going into halftime because especially that Dodge gets the ball to start the second half. Mm -hmm. But uh, right here has gotten, gotten a little chippy and gotten a little chaotic, and so we've got to keep our composure, do our rules here for 12 seconds. That's what Coach Chilton's thinking. Call a timeout, calm them down. It's worth that moment here to say, all right, fellas, don't do anything wrong. Second down and six from the nine-yard line with 12 seconds remaining. They they throw it. They got a chance to get a couple of passes. Both teams are now out of timeouts. Ball sitting on the far hash. They got trips spread all the way to the near sideline. One receiver by himself on the far sideline. Mitchell in a pistol formation, and we get a whistle to stop play. Whitecap is walking all the way over here. And I think they may have started the clock before the snap, so they're going to put 12 seconds back on the clock. The uh, clock guy down here struggled a little bit today. The clock was at ten and a half seconds. So it's reset to 12. Ball sitting on the far hash. Three receivers all the way to the near side of the field. One receiver and one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side. They've got Mitchell in the backfield with Gordon. Mitchell straight drop. Now he's going to tuck it and throw quarterback draw, and he's going to make it into the end zone for the touchdown. He spread us all out all over the field and then just straight quarterback draw right up the middle. Yeah, that was a big play there, Jim. Mm -hmm. um, just a heads-up play by your quarterback. Everybody's bailed out. He saw the alley up the middle, tucked it, and ran. Risky because we had two guys there try to uh, get to him, but mm -hmm. uh, ended up paying dividends there because they had no timeouts left. So. Dodge County gets on the board with six seconds remaining in the half. George Jackson in for the extra point. Mitchell with the EP American footwear touchdown. A whistle on the kick. It went through. And the point after is good. So let's take a 30-second timeout here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org.
Back here at the Pinelands, we got six seconds for money in the half. Jeff Davis 14, Dodge County 7. EP, I mean, Mitch's Pharmacy kickoff is a squibber that's going to be picked up at about the 18-yard line. And that's going to run out of bounds, and that's going to run out the clock. And that's where we're going to end the half. Going to send it down to Josh Horton here with Coach Lance Helton. Coach, big night. Uh, new look here. A lot of young kids in the crowd. Uh, thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I think that the rec night is a great night. It's my favorite night of the year. Um, we did some things to, to catch them by surprise early. The real question right now, Josh, is how can we play when they know what's coming? That's right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Well, Josh Horton with our Bank of Hazelhurst halftime coaches interview. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. Get some words from our sponsors after this break on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Dr. Kirkman Syak and his health care professionals at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic care about their patients. The Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic offers prompt health care for acute sicknesses and treatments for a wide range of non-emergency illnesses and injuries. To make an appointment, call 912-375-4884 or visit them at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets and God bless from Dr. Kirkman Syak and his team at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at their location at 118 Ottawa Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets! Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. We're back here for the Altamont Bank and Trust halftime show as the Dodge County Marching Band about to take the field here. Uh, Chris, what a what a exciting first half. Jackets got out to a 14-0 lead. Um, Dodge scored right at the end of the half, but uh, you know the first quarter was just everybody, it was both teams trading punts, and then finally uh, Jackets went 70 yards in three plays as uh, Colby Beach hooked up with Terrence Clemens from 39 yards out. Fabian Val Dalamar kicked the extra point, make it 7 nothing, And then with Jackets got the ball with 5.23 remaining in the half, and this time they went 66 yards in five plays with Terrence Clemens taking it in from three yards out. But the big play on that one was a big catch by Latrell Sellers, who got us on the other side of the field and made it, you know, had us a chance to – get in there and score and then uh, Dodge County got the ball on the jacket side of the field at the 42 yard line drove it down 10 plays they scored with six seconds remaining and 14-7 is where we stand here at the half um, Air Helton showed out here in the first half it didn't well uh, Jim we had two series there where we run three pass plays in a row mm -hmm. uh, on the night we're sitting here with 155 yards in the first half of passing and that is, uh, we were talking about it a while mm -hmm. ago, one of the breaks. I don't know if we've had 150 yards total in the last couple of years passing. Uh, for the entire season, much less than one half of football. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, try to throw a wrinkle in here to, to try to jumpstart this offense that has really not been able to get its feet under it during the uh, first six games of the season. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of shotgun formations, Kobe Beach. Really spinning the ball well from the quarterback. The young sophomore quarterback 
kind of coming into his own here. He is, Jim. He's been able to set his feet. Liner doing a good job. Giving mm -hmm. that little extra time from the uh, shotgun snap is uh, making him look a lot more comfortable back there. Uh, got an opportunity to do a lot of things, and he showed it tonight. Mm -hmm. He's uh, completed nine out of 12, I believe, is what I have here. Um, 155 yards, like we said. Uh, one of them being a touchdown. Uh, also, you got Latrell Sellers going across the middle. Already mm -hmm. catching it as a big for as a freshman. You got senior uh, Clemens come up with two big plays, uh, catching the ball for 62 total yards. Mm -hmm. So um, you know everybody's kind of getting in. He's hit five different receivers on the night. Uh, rushing wise, we're struggling. Uh, we only got 37 total yards rushing, and so that's part of the reason Coach Helton has aired it out a little bit right. to open up and get everybody out of the box. Um, you know Dodge. Coming in uh, before that last series, only had 74 total yards of offense. They ended the half with 129 as they gained 40 yards of rushing in that last little drive with right at two minutes to go. Um, so we've got to we've mm -hmm. got to kind of watch that right there at the end of the half. I think that's what happened to us uh, against Berrien last right. week at the end of the second half. Mm -hmm. We kind of relaxed just a little bit and let them get some big plays in. Uh, we can't let that happen today uh, tonight here. As, uh, you know, we had a four, comfortable 14 nothing lead. Now we're at 14-7, and Dodge gets the ball to come back out from halftime. Dodge County Marching Band doing a Star Wars theme here tonight. So uh, it's got the drummers with their Stormtrooper mask on. Well, that's, that's a neat-looking look there. It is. It's, this is so far <laughs> just watching as we're uh -huh. talking up here. This has been a, a fun little uh, entertainment thing to watch. You're getting to watch it at home as uh, you see them kind of bounce around. There's the... The lightsabers going at it. Right. Uh, you, I will say the drummers are doing a better job of hitting their drums than most stormtroopers are doing shooting at somebody. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so I bet Dr. Kurt's uh, kind of geeking out on this down there. Oh, uh, there's no doubt Dr. Kurt is loving this right here. Is if you know Dr. Kurt, you know he's a big Star Wars buff, and um, this is this is entertaining. The Dodge County is doing a great job with it right here. They're having you can tell they're having fun. The uh, drum major in. Uh, Dressed up like the Emperor with the dark black robe on. So, I haven't seen Darth Vader make an appearance yet, but we're sure he'll be. I'm sure he'll show up in a minute. And, um, I'm going to have to admit that mm -hmm. uh, I had a buddy who was a huge Star Wars guy and tried to get me to, to watch all the stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, I kept referring to it as Star Trek, which drives him <laughs> over the edge. But uh, I, I'm kind of clueless. On, I know some of these things, but I don't know yep. what a lot of this. I, I, I kind of enjoyed the first couple of movies in the series and i've not been able to get into the latter one so uh i'm not definitely didn't i'm like you i you know uh, i identify more with star trek than star wars but well, i tell you jim before we take a little mm -hmm. break here uh the just catch you up real quick on some other things softball will play here monday against dodge for the region title it's a double header uh, we've got to win one to claim the region title. Uh, Dodge has to sweep us both games Monday for uh, for them to win. But uh, right now we only, we have no losses in the region um, and only one loss on the season. Uh, Dodge has one loss in the region, a couple losses over the season. Their one loss is to us already, but we're playing the doubleheader Monday at four and at six mm -hmm. for our fans of uh, cross country. Middle school to next week has region and state. Uh, meets next week. Uh, region conference is on Tuesday, and the state uh, middle school meet is on Saturday. Uh, then high school has a couple more weeks until region. Boys right now for high school is ranked number seventh in the state, and the girls are ranked number eight. Uh, our softball team I did fail to mention is ranked. You said uh, what was uh, AJC? AJC has them number one, and Max Prep has them number two behind Applin, who we have beat this year. Right. So uh, softball is doing great. Cross country is doing great. Cheerleaders are competing. And the uh, middle school softball team won their conference this That's, week. Yeah, middle school softball team won their conference. Uh, cheerleading is hosting. Their, they're not competing this week because of fall break, mm -hmm. but they are hosting their competition next Friday or next Saturday here at the high school if you want to come out and watch it. So lots of things going on for high school athletics. Um, and so just wanted to throw that in before mm -hmm. we take our break here at halftime and let come back and listen to our band. Hate to have to break away from this entertaining show by Dodge County, but we do have to pay some bills, so we're going to take a two-minute timeout. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over-the-road tractor-trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. 
they offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, you're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family-owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from Memorial Designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. Make the switch to Mitch, not only for your prescription needs, but also for your gift needs. Visit Designs and More by Brandy located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop Designs and More by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone, shoes by Corky, and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're an exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Back here on the Altima Bank and Trust Halftime Show. You got the Darth, Darth Vader makes his appearance here with the Stormtroopers. We were looking for Darth and this entertaining show. We're going to let you listen in to a little bit here on the Altima Bank and Trust Halftime Show. He had the Dodge County High School marching band with their tribute to Star Wars here. Did Darth just win? He did on the Altapod Bank and Trust halftime show. While the Jeff Davis Pride of the Pioneers are getting set to take the field, let's take a 60-second timeout. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. At Altima Hall Bank and Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altimahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. We're back here in the Pine Lines on the Altima Hall Bank and Trust Halftime Show. We have with Dr. Greer Smith, superintendent of the Jeff Davis County School System. And Dr. Greer Smith, principal of Jeff Davis High School, we proudly present the 2022 edition of the Pride of the Pine Lines. The band director is Nicholas F. Stoppie, assisted by Mr. Jimmy Oliver and Mr. Shane Schroeder. The auxiliary director is Ms. Courtney Oliver. Our band president is Kristen Burley, vice president Olivia Duckett, drum major Brian Trejo. 
Tonight, we present our halftime show entitled Latin Night. Music se musical selections include Estancia, Novus, Novus, featuring Lily featuring Gravy on trumpet, and Lazora. Drum Major, Brian Trejo.
ladies and gentlemen, the pride of the pond land. They have the pride of the Pinelands marching band here on the Altima Bank and Trust halftime show. Two minute timeout here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. Make the switch to Mitch for all your over-the-counter and prescription medicine needs. Take advantage of their drive-up window, curbside, and delivery services. The health of you and your family is their priority. Make the switch to Mitch, located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 and 9 to noon on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and make sure to follow them on Facebook. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you are looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets! About ready to start the second half. Jeff Davis 14, Dodge County 7. The Indians will receive the second half. Mitch's Pharmacy kickoff here as Fabian Valdelamar will tee it up for the Jackets. And Chris, uh, uh, we played great for defense for about 48 minutes, and then but Dodge County kind of pinned their ears back and stormed down the field. 24 minutes. 24 minutes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. 24 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Wait a minute. I missed a game. No, yeah, 24 minutes, and the Dodge stormed but, down the field and scored right before the end of the half. But, Jim, all joking mm-hmm. aside, this is what we thought this game was going to be, a yep. battle back and forth between mm-hmm. two teams that were very equally matched. And uh, that's what you're seeing right here is we get ready to kick off to them and try to keep our seven-point lead. We squib it on the ground. Get Ball's it. rolling down there. And Got it. Loosen the Jackets have recovered. Inside no, the 40. Didn't. Oh, they're going to give it to Dodge. It's inside the 40. Somehow or another, number five rolled across the top of the pile and come up with it there. But legit, he had it in his hand. But, oh, I thought we had it. And I like going to spot it about the 36-yard line. Uh, and uh, we had a chance at it, and we were celebrating like we had it, but an Indian snuck in there and swiped it away. I think whenever we bounced right there at the end, it mm-hmm. rolled under us, and five rolled over the top of the pile and was able to come up with it. First and 10, Dodge County at the 37 to start the second half. They're going to send trips to the near side of the formation. Mitchell with Gordon's going to step up beside him here. Gordon's going to take the handoff, working far side. Jackets try to hem him up, but he breaks through, and he's going to have a first down out around midfield. He just can't tackle this guy. No, it should be at 49, but I think they're going to spot him at 50. Uh, he's slippery, Jim, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, or elusive, I guess is a better word to use. Uh, he gets there. We just think when we got it, he's got enough quickness about him to dart away and making it a little bit of a challenge on us. He just keeps driving those legs and pulling through tackles. First and 10 dodge at midfield, trips to the near side, ball on the far hash. We'll give it to Gordon again, straight ahead. He cuts it to the near side. Now he's in the open field. we got a Finally run him down inside the 35-yard line. Another big run by Damarian Gordon. 
Latrell Sellers and Terrence Clemens on the stop there, having to hem him up. Jim, he, again, they're talking about it. He's, he kind of wait, buys his time hitting the hole and then just shifts gears, uh, not equating him to the speed or the ability of Barry Sanders, but that's what he's like. He gets in the hole and then is just shifting. Well, that was 19 yards on the carry that time by Gordon. is operate again. This time is going to be pow uh, check that Howard on the carry. He's got running room. He's down far sideline and inside the 15. He just kind of got tripped up there. And he's going to be near the 10 yard line. Looks like going to walk him at the 11, 20 yards on that carry by Gordon. And Dodge County is stormed down the field here to start the second half. And Jim, they're just coming right at us except for the one <laughs> run that uh, uh, number one, Gordon mm -hmm. bounced out to the outside. Everything else has been right up in between the tackles. They spread us out with trips to the near side. Ball stays on the far hash. Gordon moves up. Ahead of Mitchell. Mitchell going to take it. Quarterback keeper, he's right up the middle, and we hit him after a short game. We'll have him to about the seven-yard line. And it was a pickup of four. Oh, they're backing it up there, Jim. To the eight, so pick up yes, of three. Be second down and seven. Just underway, second half. Jeff Davis clinging to a seven-point lead. Dodge County. Threatening now in the red zone. Gordon in the backfield beside Mitchell. Gordon's going to get it straight ahead. This Stop time we hit him up and drive him back. Lamonte in. Deeds in on the tackle. Run in right there to a big pile. and was unable to get away as we grabbed him by the ankles. And and I could not tell who did that. And Amari and Mitchell got the first contact, I believe. A loss back to the 10, ten to be third down and nine. Two receivers far side, one to the near side. Gordon's going to get the handoff, trying to work the left side. He's going to be down close to a first down. Tell you, Jim, when he falls, for, when he falls, mm -hmm. he's going forward. It's not going to be about a yard short or about a half a yard. Depends on where these guys spotted right there. Ooh, wow. It'll be fourth down in a yard. Be fourth and one from the two. Gain of eight there. They gave him 100 yards on the night. Big play for the Jacket defense right here. Got to try to come up with a stop. Fourth and one. Ball's at the two. Mitchell going to keep it himself, working far side. We hit him, but he slips through and gets in the end zone for the EP American Footwear touchdown. We had a shot at him at for a, about a loss of one, but he. He just shrugged it off his shoulders and carried it on in. We hit him high, and a guy like that, you got to hit low. Yeah, you do, Jim. And we got a little antsy there. Uh, we had mm -hmm. him contained, and instead of keep running him to the sideline, using the sideline as a third tackler, we kind of went straight at him, and that gave him a chance to dip that shoulder and, um, and get away from us. So George Jackson on to attempt the extra. Extra point to tie the game with 8.50 remaining in the third period. He gets a good snap and a good kick, and it's good. So 8.50 remaining in the third period, all tied up at 14 apiece. 60-second timeout on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912. 375-0640 or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. 
At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Mm-hmm. Mitch's pharmacy kickoff was taken by Upman by the Jackets at the 33. He fell Weaver. forward to the 35, and it was Ty Weaver on the play. So the Jackets will start first and 10 at the 35. We're all tied up at 14 apiece with 8.48 remaining in the half. And, Chris, you got an update for us on the McCarty Auto Park scoreboard? Yeah, uh, Fitzgerald is taking it to Worth right now. Uh, was a close little game, but uh, 10 minutes to go in the third quarter, it is 28 to nothing, Fitzgerald. Jackets come to the line, send a man in motion out wide. We'll give it to Clemens, who's trying to work far side. Nothing doing, a loss on the play as Dodge County stormed into our backfield. And the loss is back to the 33, a loss of two on the play. Loss of two on the play brings up second and 12. Ball started at the 33-yard line. See if I can find this a uh, Sumter score. 14-14, our score here. Be second down and 12 for the Yellow Jackets. The trail sellers are going to split to the near side. Ball sits on the far hash. Empty backfield set. Man in motion as Clemens across the formation. Beach is going to roll near side under pressure. Looking down. He's got Clemens wide, wide open. open. And he's going to be hit from behind. No flag. What in the world? Man, that was pass interference all day long as the guy trying to recover and catch up to the Clemens just ran into him before the ball got there. That was uh, – he, he made a great job recovering mm-hmm. ground, but never looked back, run straight into Clemens, threw his hands up, trying to face guard him. Uh, I do have an update for Sumter and Berrien at mm-hmm. halftime. Sumter 28, Berrien 21. Wow. So Colby Beach now facing a third down and 12 as we should have had a either a catch and a first down or a pass interference penalty in a first down. Sellers going to come wide to the near side of the field with Clemens in the slot. Now we're going to send Ty Weaver out too. We're going to throw it out here to Weaver. Check that. That was a Just threw it over, over right too there. tall for Ty. That's going to bring up fourth down. And Jackett's going to have to punt it away. Didn't run hardly any time off the clock there. Um, you know, that, that ball just floated on beach mm-hmm. as he was trying to get it to Weaver. A um, little bit of miscommunication. We got a guy wide open right here, it's Jim. Mm-hmm. Oh, never mind. Now they do send somebody out to cover. It was Carter a, Galbraith having to release a boot back there. It was a big, big play there by their senior, Keegan Williams. Look over and see that there was a receiver out here because he was wide open. Two men back for Indians. Rugby style kick's going to hit at the 47. Going to roll the fumble, and Dodge was able to jump back on it. It it hit off of their return man, bounced back, and we kicked it back a little bit, and Dodge somehow falls on it. Another one, we had a loose ball. We had a chance for on a special teams play and come up empty. Apologize there. Yeah, it was that was a big um, – opportunity there for us we had a big opportunity on kickoff to recover a ball mm-hmm. and right there on punt had a big opportunity had two guys run right past it uh mm-hmm. big big play 76 yards on that kick excuse me <laughs> 26 <laughs> yards on that kick Woo! <laughs> first and 10 dodge from the 41 they've got great field position here in a tie ball game Mitchell has a low snap, has to fumble it around. Going to toss it downfield, complete on the far sidelines and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. So pickup of six is going to make it second down and four. Trips to the far side, one to the near side. Mitchell's going to give it 
to Gordon. Gordon's trying to work far side. We come up and hit him and stop him short of the first down, but it's going to be third and short. Should be at the 49 and a half. We'll see where they put this ball, though. Might be going to spot him right at midfield. Good. 49. Up. Oh, him at the 49. So it'll be third down in about two. Jacket's trying to fire up here on third down. Money down here for the Jacket defense. Third and short for the Indians. As they're hovering them around midfield. Mitchell takes it himself. Looking for his eye. He dives Big forward. tackle by Laney. Laney hits him low, but he dove forward, and he's going to have the first down by about a half yard. 48. A big play, Laney came up and made the low hit, but Mitchell, the senior, just used all 5'9", 167 pounds worth to stretch for the first down. First and 10 in jacket territory now. Mitchell dropping back, looking to throw. Got a man open near side. Low throw. Did he hang on to it? They say he didn't make a catch at the 40. A pickup of eight on the play. It'll be second down and two, and he's got Williams over there, just kind of goes out seven or eight yards and squats down, and he's in front of our coverage. Got to tighten up a little bit over there. He, right. sit, he, saw, he gets him one and one on the far side of the field. The difference, the bad part is if he's, he's hitting these little stops, he, mm -hmm. we're going to break on it in a second, he's going to go stop and goes. Mitchell straight ahead, quarterback draw right up the middle. He's got running room. He's going to be all the way down around the 20-yard line. A pickup of a close to 20 on the play. They're going to mark him at the 22, so a pickup of 18. But it's going to be a Indian first down with 5.51 to play in the third period. Dodge County now trying to rally back from a 14-point deficit to take the lead. Right now they have 14 uh, unanswered points. Mm -hmm. Again, Williams by himself on the far side, two receivers near side. Williams gives it to Gordon straight ahead. We hit him and stuff him right in the hole. That was Howard. There. Howard, rather. They swapped him out real quick. They're going to give him a yard. Number 20, Howard on the carry. Stop for no gain. Brings up second down. He's second and 10 from the 21. Now they're going to, two receivers just trips to the near side. Mitchell going to feed Gordon. Gordon looking far side. He's Cut trying back. To cuts back inside, and he's going to have seven or eight yards. Mitchell wrapped him up for us. Amari Mitchell was there. He got a hold of him, but, again, you were talking about it. Laramie Mitchell, their guy, just keeps his feet driving and makes a tough run with our guy trying to bring him down to the eight. He Third down and three. Ball at the 13. Oh, excuse me, 13. Eight for the game. Mitchell out of the gun. Going to have a whistle before they start of the play. And signal offside against the Yellow Jackets. That's going to give... Dodge a first down, down around the eight-yard line. And another one of those little nit, nitpicky, nitpicky, not nitpicky, but little just aggravating five-yard penalties. It is. 4-12 remaining in the third period now. First and goal from the eight for the Indians. The Jackets defense has got to bow its back here. Try to get a stop. Keep him out of the end zone. Gordon shifts out in the backfield. Mitchell going to keep it. Dancing inside. Get a flag thrown. He's into the end zone. But I think that's going to come back for a hold. Yeah, there was one of their guys on top of Laney. Just grabbed him and slung him to the ground. Great tackle. Yep. Offensive, lo offensive blocker can't tackle somebody. Can't tackle your linebackers. That's going to 
Move them back. To the 18. To the 18. Will be. First to go. Well, they got the sticks up over there. Yeah, now it's first and goal from the 18. Two receivers left side. Mitchell taking the snap. Dropping we'll back, it. looking to throw. On the rollout, jump throw down the far Pick side. Off. Picked off. Interception by the Jackets. That's what we needed. Trying to work up field. Gets a good block right there. It's Latrell Sellers, and he's going nice to finally job. be. Stiff arms a guy and finally gets it all the way out to the 30-yard line. Definitely want to see that on our Interstate Credit Union instant replay. Freshman Latrell Sellers steps up and picks a jump pass off right there and comes over to this side. Great block. We got to try to see if I can get his number. I think that's Phillips making a great block out here for Sellers to get around the corner to get to the 30, which was a run of about 25 yards to get us some great field position and stop a big drive by Dodge County. Still tied 14 all. The Jacket defense comes up with the big play. And now with 319 remaining in the third, Jackets have the ball at their own 30-yard line. Sellers is going to come wide with Clemens in the slot. Beach out of the shotgun, going to flex out Weaver. Now he's under pressure looking Good to throw. Block. He's just going to have to throw it away as he got a, some help to get out of pressure. But he had to... Everybody was covered. He just had to throw that ball away. And that's going to be bring up second down and 10. Wesley Brown, a great job coming back and picking up a block there to help. Oh, they threw a flag, Jim. And a flag comes in late, and that may be against Dodge County. No. Intentional grounding is going to be the call. I guess he wasn't outside the tackle box. Jim, I don't think the throw went past the line of scrimmage. Okay. That was that was it then. It didn't make you're right. It didn't make it back to the line of scrimmage. So erase that play, and that's gonna well, be a loss of down, and gonna move it back to the 15, where it'll be second down. And forever. Second down and 25. Uh, Martin, uh, yeah, loss of down. Should have been. It was a big play there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colby had the right idea, just did not get it past the line of scrimmage because he had went back so far. So um, Elijah Phillips and Carter Gabbard split out. They're going to give it inside to Weaver, who's trying to work inside, but nothing doing there. They just swap back with Clarence, uh, Tim Clemens. Clemens, rather. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, bring up third down in forever. And get a big turnover. And then... The intentional grounding penalty just kind of takes the wind out of our sails. It does. Big, big, big play by a freshman. Uh, then, uh, then, like I said, Beach did everything right except didn't get it past the line of scrimmage. And truthfully, if he had mm-hmm. stayed in his normal pocket where he was at, Jim, that was past the line of scrimmage. But yeah. because he had to go back and lost his orientation to where he was at, um, he, he just got a little short of the line of scrimmage. So, Two receivers go to the far side. Man in motion is Laney. Beach back, looking to throw. Now he's rolling near side away from pressure. Trying to find somebody downfield. He's going to heave it downfield. And right through Terrence Clemens' hands, he threaded the needle and almost had a completion, a good throw by Beach as he tried to thread it through a couple of Dodge County defenders. Jim, and I'll tell you the other thing that was impressive mm-hmm. on that play there, we were just talking about how Beach didn't get it past the um, line of scrimmage whenever mm-hmm. on the intentional grounding call. Right here, he ends up throwing that ball off of his foot on the 14-yard line, so he's one yard short across the line of scrimmage on a scramble. He was well aware of where mm-hmm. he was supposed to be there. 2.08 remaining in the third period, and Jack is going to have to punt it away deep. Dodge is going to come away with good field position. McDuffie and Mitchell back deep to return the punt. Rugby style kick, low driving kick that's going to hit and roll, and it's going to go out of bounds. At the 49. At the 49. Not sure why he threw a flag there, but. He, he, he just shook his head. He, he shook his head. He was, so it's going to be at the 47. Yeah, they spotted at the 47. So a punt of 32 yards. Mark 
Galbraith. 2.03 remaining in the third period as Dodge is going to start on the jacket side of the field at the 47. They've had all the field position here in the second half. That they have, Jim. They've, they've kind of controlled. Our defense really does need a break. Um, offense both times have been in and out three plays. Uh, defense been on the field this whole ser- this whole quarter just about. And when you throw the ball, the incomplete passes, the clock stops. It doesn't take much time off the clock. First and ten dodge right at near midfield. Going to turn and pitch it back deep to Gordon. Gordon's trying to fo- far side. And we still can't drag him down. Take about five or six jackets to finally hem him up. And he's going to be inside the 45 to about the 42 maybe. A pickup of about five on the play. So Jim, I tell you, mm-hmm. Gordon come into this game and, not really much on our radar for what yeah. we've seen. And he is doing a – I've been impressed with him tonight as far as his ability to keep his feet going and make some cuts to cause us to miss. Again, their normal playmaker, Duke Johnson, is out with a separated shoulder. So they've had to shuffle their lineup, move Laramie Mitchell to quarterback, and Gordon has been their go-to guy out of the backfield. Gordon's going to get it again. This time we hit him in the backfield. And rolling back for a loss on the play. Big, big play there. 64, Cade Carver. Let's see it on instant replay. Right, he wraps him up, and there's another guy there. Uh, Ty Weaver had him wrapped up from behind, and Carver come in to the front side and was just land blasting him. Now, they didn't give him all the way back. They started that line of penetration or forward progress, right. so he got stopped at 45. Be third down and nine. Under a minute to go in the third. Big play by the Jackets defense. Now got to have another one, third and long. Trips to the far side. Going to quick throw out on the wide receiver screen. We hem him up over there, and a little or no gain on the play. And the clock stopped with 29 seconds to go. Be fourth down. So you got back. Uh, No, they're moving him. Moving him back to the lost yard, 48, 48, 48, 47. Seven. Also two on the play. Fourth and ten. Fourth and ten for the Indians, and their punter George Jackson is on. Elijah Phillips is going to drop back deep. Jackets defense held. Kick away, not quite as high this time. Phillips though. Is going to take it, muff it, and go to recover him, go to his knees right there at the 14 yard line. The Jackets again have to work from deep in their own territory. 33 yards on that punt. End up moving to 15 there. So 21 seconds remaining. And looks like they're going to put him on the 15. So the Jackets work from there again. They've started at their 15 on their last possession. After they started at the 30 and then had the intentional grounding penalty to back them up to the 15. One more play here in the third period. Tied at 14 apiece. Jackets got everybody in tight. And it's Clemens on the direct snap is going to cut it inside, and he's going to get up around the 20-yard line, pick up of about five on the play. We suck it down in five as the third quarter is going to come to an end. That's your score after three. Jeff Davis 14, Dodge County 14, 60-second timeout. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Dr. Kirkman Syak and his health care professionals at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic care about their patients. The Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic offers prompt health care for acute sicknesses, and treatments for a wide range of non-emergency illnesses and injuries. To make an appointment, call 912-375-4884 or visit them at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets and God bless from Dr. Kirk Munsiak and his team at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts where parts arrive daily Monday through Friday 8 to 5 at their location at 118 Ottawa Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets. 
Go to quarter number four. We're going to check in with our Southern Eye Care sideline for Josh Horton. Tell us what, what all it's happened there in the third quarter. Guys, like Helton said, you you got to adjust uh, to the way they adjust in the third quarter there and, and see how this offense can come out in this, this fourth quarter and uh, play like we did the first two. Be second down and five for the Yellow Jackets from the 20-yard line. Now the Jackets moving right to left. Right of the gun. Carter Mullis, Colby Beach going to give it straight back to to Terrence Clemens. That was Galbraith in the backfield with, with Clemens. Clemens is going to be up to the 25. That's going to be close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. They do give him the 25 and a first down. So another five-yard pickup. The Jackets move the sticks to start the fourth quarter. You know, I tell you, this is a game like we talked about in the, first, in the pregame show going to be back and forth between two teams and um, this is a fun game to watch tonight it's a very high paced game 14-14 um, you know, is our score with 11-30 remaining in the game Jackets got tight formation Galbraith Clemens Clemens going to take the direct snap he's got running room up the middle he's tripped up as he crossed the 35 or he was off to the races going to give him the 37 to pick up of 12 on the play. So we'll see that one again real quick before they come back to the line of scrimmage. That was a big, hard run there by Clements. The first down, 10 for the Jackets, the 37 yard line. Two quick first downs for the offense. Again, Galbraith, Clemens in the shotgun. Clemens takes the snap. It's gonna be a short game before he's wrestled back. May have picked up one on the play. As Dodge County packed everybody in the box that time. And we might slip somebody off the line or out of the backfield here with, we got a drone over there? No, that's a, just a car out there on the highway. I looked up and saw lights. <laughs> like a, something flying over the low over the field here. It is kind of dark over there. With these new lights that we've got in of this stadium, yeah. it does make everything around us look a lot darker. Second down and eight. As again, a tight formation. Galbraith and Clemens. Clemens gets the snap. Going to run the inside handoff to Laney, and he's hit and dropped in the backfield. He may have lost a yard on the play. I'm not sure that defender knew he made the tackle right there. He, he was, just kind of popped his head up off submarine. And, and we got a man down, a Jess Davis walking clinic injury timeout here on the field as they, our training staff at Jeff Weems and Dr. Kirk go out to check on injured players up to his feet. It's like 53, 53 Brian Reyes, one of our starting guards, is looked like he may have got his bell rung pretty bad there. Coach Ste Weems on the sidelines got him checking out. Let's take a quick 30-second timeout on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Okay. Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Third and nine for the Jackets. Going to run Clemens on the reverse. He's got wide open field. He's got the first down into Dodge territory and stepped out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. Kind of a little misdirection play there by the Jackets. Let's see it on the instant replay. They, they fake the handoff to Laney. Everybody bites this way. The only one that really sniffed it out there, uh, number four from Dodge, who has been all over the field, Williams and Simmons, kind of sn sniffed it out and started chasing Clemens again. Not for, but before the big gain down to the 37. 26 oh, yards on the carry by Terrence Clemens. And the Jackets have a first down in Dodge territory now. So stay with this single wing formation with everybody packed in tight. Clemens is going to get the snap. Take it right up the middle and he's going to get to the 35 for a pickup of a couple on the play. Jim, I tell you, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Uh, Clemens, 
Dane would get called out a lot on both sides of the ball. He's flying around. He's mm -hmm. all over this field. They're bringing him out right now for a quick breather. They're trying to find somebody to, to rotate in. And There's Carter two. Galbraith is getting the play from the sidelines. There's, we got all, we got everybody on the field. There's 10 out there. The Galbraith makes 11. Play clock running down, though. We're getting down to five. Ain't got time. Better call it. We get just Ooh. get the snap off. Going to run near side. I believe that's Carter Galbraith on the keeper. He's going to get inside the Latrell, that, Latrell Sellers. He's going to get inside the 35 to the 33. Pick up of a couple on the play. <clears throat> 32 yard line, make you three on the play. Jim, that was close. Yeah, it was. They right at the clock expiring, we just did get it off under the gun. That's third down and about five. Jackets on a drive. It started back at their 15. Ninth play of the drive coming up, trying to break a 2 2 tie. Going unbalanced to the left, or to the right, rather, and get a flag. And looks like you're going to get Jackets for another procedure penalty. I'll make it third down and seven. Third down and ten, rather. So, 7.58 remaining in the ball game. 14-14. Is the score on the McCarty Auto Parts school board? Look, the Jackets like they got some confusion in the huddle here. There's looking over at Coach. We're going to call a timeout, Jim. It's, he ain't even trying to give him a play here. Right. We're waiting for the clock to go Big down. Big play on third down and 10 here, so we're going to run the clock down, take the timeout. Let's take 30 seconds on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over-the-road tractor-trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. They offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, you're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family-owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Welcome back here to the Pylons. Well, we got third down and 10, a big play for the Jackets in a 14-14 game, 7-29. Remaining in the ball game. And a big call here by Coach Helton. He took a timeout to make sure we get this play right. And Colby Beach going to check in at quarterback. He brings the play to the huddle. Sellers is going to split out to the right. Clemens is going to go right in with him with a slot. Ty Weaver in the backfield. He's going to rotate out. Beats going downfield. He's got man cover. He's going to be picked off at the 10-yard line. Return coming back to the near side. We're going to big collision and a flag right about the 30-yard line. As a, that, that was four who we called a lot tonight, Williams, who had perfect coverage and position on that play down the far sideline. So Dodge is going to get the ball back, and let's check the, the flag here. Normally on a return, that's a block in the back. He returned it out to the right to the mark from the 30-yard line. So the all the way back to the 15, and that's where Dodge will start first and 10 after the penalty. Oh, the 14. Mm. Penalty is against Dodge County. They'll be first and 10 after the penalty. Big 15-yard mark off against the Indians. Seven eighteen remaining in the ball game. Jackets 14, Indians 14. Jackets led 14-0. Big stop here. Indians scored 
just before the half closed, and then they took the second half kickoff down to tie the game. And it's been a battle of the defenses since then. Now Dodge starting deep in their territory at their 14. They've got trips to the far side of the field, ball sitting on the near hash. Mitchell turns, pitches deep to Gordon. Gordon looking for running room on the far side. And that's your, uh, that might have been 23 there. 23. May have been Pitts on the carry, but he's going to get out about five yards out to the 19. Or they cross up over there. They did. I'm sorry, Jim, you were right. Yeah. It, was, it was Gordon. Well, it'll be spotted at the 19 yard line. So second, second down and five. Pistol set. Now Gordon steps up. Handoff given to Gordon. Gordon's got a first down. He's taken off. There he goes. He just ran right by everybody. Go get him, Clemens. Go Clemens get him. is trying to track him down from behind, and he does before he crosses the goal line, and a flag comes in. What in the world could be? Did he grab a face mask? He, could. All, he wrapped him up. He, he hit it. It looked like he, and he swiped trying to knock the ball away. What kind of? What are they going to call? I'm not sure what in the world that flag could be. I don't know, but he's going to be down at about the two-yard line. They call it horse collar. Oh, there's no way that's a horse collar. He hit him. He come from behind and just swiped at the football. He wrapped him up. Oh, Wow. I mean, it's going to cost us a yard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were right. It's going to be. But first. that's a horrible call. First and goal from the, about the one. And they went forward. Horse collars grab them by the shoulder pads and pull them backwards. Yeah, he did not go backwards. He went forward. So first and goal from the one for the Indians to try to take the lead. Ball snapped on the ground. It's loose. And he picked I, it back up. And they, Mitchell picked it back up. Uh, the snap rolled back to him. Going to be lost back to the two. So let me get that big run. So it was 30 plus 50, subtract two yards. So 78 yard run. Second and goal. Now from the two. Going to give it the handoff to the running back. Oh. Howard, he's going to be into the end zone for the touchdown. EP American footwear touchdown by Raphael Howard. And Dodge County has come from 14 down to take the lead with 5.53 remaining in the ball game. 5.43, rather. Looking for the extra point to give them a seven-point lead here as they run a swinging gate. George Jackson on has been perfect on his first two attempts tonight. He's got a strong leg. High kick. Mm. Drifts towards the left but squeezes in the left upright. And with 543 remaining, Dodge 21, Jeff Davis 14, 60 second timeout on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders for memorial designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. Make the switch to Mitch, not only for your prescription needs, but also for your gift needs. Visit Designs and More by Brandy, located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop Designs and More by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone, shoes by Corky, and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. Uh, Mitch's pharmacy kickoff. They try the squib kick. Jacket's going to recover 
close to the 45-yard line. And Jackson's going to have good field position here. And trailing now 21-14. Got to have a drive here, Chris. We do, Jim, and big play. And that penalty does not uh, really affect us over yeah. there. But mm -hmm. still, that was that was a rough call to take. We still don't understand that one. But uh, we got a, we got a great opportunity here on the 45, five and a half minutes to go, roughly. Got to put the points on the board. Two timeouts for the Jackets. Clemens going to come in the slot with Sellers to the near side. Beach gives it straight ahead to Weaver. Weaver's got running room. He jumps across midfield and got tripped up. Number 23, Ashton Pitts. 46. Got, to, got him tripped up, and he's going to be across midfield to the 47-yard line. Really? A pickup of eight on the play. Be second down and two. A good opening play there by Ty Weaver. He did a good job keeping his feet and shifting back and forth in there. Sellers and Clemens come to the near side. Laney's going to be in the wing position. Beach out of the shotgun. And give it ahead to Weaver again. He's going to be hit from behind and dropped for a loss. Back at the 50, a loss of three on the play. I'm giving the 49. Well, hold on. The, there you go. The other guy was standing on the 50 over there. We put him at 49. So it'll be a loss of two on third and five. And they're just those big interior linemen for Dodge. We can't slow them down a whole lot. No, that one right there slipped right past the Santa. I think we caught him in a stun on that first run by Weaver, and he just hit the open hole. So now passing down for the Jackets, third and five. Sellers to the left. Clemens in a slot. Beach rolling, looking this way. Going to get Peyton, Peyton Laney underneath. Laney breaks out of a tackle. He's inside the 40 for a first down. Let's see that one again and on the Interstate Credit Union. Check the replay on this one. He watch him break a tackle. Beach looks. Hits him in the flat as he's coming out. Laney shut, sheds that tackle and then is able to keep rolling. Gain is to the 38. Got an injury here, Jim. So a... Mitch's Farmers, I mean, a Jeff Day's walk in clinic injury timeout here. But the Jackets going to have it first and 10. So let's take 30 seconds here for a break from our sponsors. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're the exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. 4-11 remaining in the fourth. Dodge leading 21-14. Jackets on a the drive. They've got it. First and 10 at the Indians' 38-yard line. Clock running, four minutes to play. We're in a tight formation. Everybody packed in tight. Beach and the shotgun with Clemens. Clemens takes a direct snap. Going to try to dance out of trouble, but he's going to be stopped after a short gain on play. This Dodge County team really tackles really well. They do, Jim. They get a hold of you, wrap up tight. And hold on. Um, and the thing, and the reason you can pick out their mm -hmm. tackling well is there's a lot of single person tackles. Yep. Um, you know, Yellow Jackets do a great job of swarm tackling and everybody getting there, but a Dodge just grab a hold of you and can bring you down singly because of how they grab you. No gain on the play, makes it second down and 10. 320 remaining in the game. Carter Galbraith brings the play to the huddle. He's still checking out Laney there. When he come off the sideline, it was a questionable hit. Uh, that happened right there, and uh, they're still checking on him. Galbraith, Clemens. Clemens takes a direct snap, looking for the short side of the field. Cuts it back inside. He's got good a good cut. run, fighting for yardage, down to about the 31-yard line. Going to be a couple yards short of the first down. Gain of about seven, it looks like. Be brings up third down and three. And this is definitely four-down territory with 240 remaining in the ball game. Clemens has done a great job tonight, Jim. 
bunch of, been, he's got 15, uh, yeah, 15 carries on defense, uh, on special mm. teams. He, he's not coming off the field, kind of like a Bugs Bunny character. And a touchdown catch. Yes, and a touchdown run. Tight formation for the Jackets. They jump, they come across, but then no flag. Clemens gets the snap, working again to the short side. Dances in, he skips out of a tackle, gets a push from his offensive line. I think he's got the first down inside the 20. And they, we went with a delayed count there. The Gabbert clapped his hands hard. The uh, uh, line Clem shifted. Looks like Clemens is coming off with a cramp right there. Oh, and the ball back. It's going to be fourth and one. They mark him at uh, looking uh, across. They have uh, time uh, measurement, Jim. They're going to take a timeout here for a measurement with a minute 57 remaining, Chris. And it's a big measurement right here. It really is. Uh, let's, let's check in with our Southern Eye Care sideline reporter, Josh Horton. Josh, you got an eyeball on that thing? It's very close. Um, it, they got to get to the 28, and it's sitting right on top of it. All right. So we're going to see they'll have to walk the chains all the way from the far side of the field. As they put it down and Is that stretch it out. I know the two chains. And we're going to be short, short. By, about by about three lengths of the chain. That's it. Jim, I tell you, you mm -hmm. got. We do need to recognize the chain crew. Chain crew, you got Tracy Rowell and Keith Ray holding those. Is is that a Kyle or Chase over there on the far side? I think it's Chase. Chase Varner, the three guys that mm -hmm. they, they do a fantastic job keeping the chains there here every game, um, and they stay on the uh, other side over there. They hear some things that uh, are fighting words sometimes, <laughs> and uh, they're able to keep their composure. We definitely do want to say thank you to those guys helping out every game. Keeping, the, keeping a hard job over there. Fourth and inches. Carter Gabbert brings the play to the huddle. Jacket trying to spur up the crowd. Here comes, listen to the Jacket crowd get into this thing. Well, you'll be able to tell the reaction from the crowd. Gabbert going to take the direct snap to Clement. No, that's Sellers. the trail. Sellers, Sellers bulls his way to the 25 in the first down. Yeah, we got... You got Clemens taking a little bit of a breather. It looks like he's going to check back in the game now. A big play by the freshman. Sellers had some big plays tonight. Had the pick, had mm -hmm. the big catch coming across the middle of the field. Oh, uh, getting both hands up. Spot him at the 26, first and 10. Minute 28 to go. Got to pick up the pace a little bit. As Seller, uh, Galbraith brings the play to the huddle. Wow, we got the ball with five and a half minutes to go, Jim. Mm -hmm. We were really using that clock right now. We stay in a tight formation on the near hash. Clemens now in the backfield with Galbraith. Galbraith's going to take the throw. He's look, He's going to tuck it and run. He looked to throw, and he takes a tough run, gets hit right at the boundary at the 20-yard line. Did a great job by another freshman stepping up right here. We said at the end of the season we were going to be young, Jim, yep. and we're seeing some – we're still calling them freshmen, but as much as they've been playing, they're no they're they're experienced now. Spot is at the 21. A pickup of five on the play. Clock stopped on the out of bounds. One minute four remaining. Jackets trailing by seven. Trying to get this thing tied up. Send it to overtime. Carter Galbraith stays in the game. Brings it to the huddle. Sellers is going to split out far to right. Clemens and Galbraith and the shotgun. Jack, jacket shift the formation. Clemens going to take a run the inside. Hand off to Laney. Laney cuts it up the middle, and he's going to be down near the 10-yard line. Clock should stop. Move chains. 58 seconds to go. Jacket still have two timeouts. They'll spot him at the 11. 10-yard pickup be first and 10 from the 11. Oh, fix the blow the clock ready. We got to go, fellas. Timeout for somebody. Some, we Dutch. do get a timeout on the field. Timeout. Williams Dutch. Brothers trucking timeout taken. Let's take it with them. It's 30-second timeout here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. At Altima Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. 
With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altimahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back here at the Pinelands with 58.2 seconds remaining in this ball game. Jackets down seven at first and 10 at the 11-yard line. This drive, they start at the 45, ninth play of the drive coming up. We got a two timeout still, Jim. Still two timeout showing on the scoreboard. Sellers splits to the left, ball on the left hash. Gabbroth and Clemens in the backfield. Great snap, going to run, pace pa on the inside, handoff again. Face mask. And he gets spun around at about the six or seven yard line. Right in front of that middle judge, he's a and white head. The Jackets are going to take a timeout. We're going to stay right here with this one. It'll be second down, a pickup of about three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. In the market at eight. With 50 seconds remaining. And now you're. Had an opportunity there. Uh, I think he got, got away with a face mask. I don't, but. I don't think Carter Galbraith has thrown it yet, but he, he can throw the ball well. He was so he maybe catch him napping here. Right. Galbraith was a middle school quarterback, I think, last he year. He was. So he does have a little bit of experience. And, and, they, and he was part of that play in the middle school championship That's game right. where they hooked up in the last seconds to uh, hooked up with a uh, – Trying to remember it, well, maybe might, might have been, been Sellers. Might have been Sellers on a long pass play to win a conference championship with just seconds to go in the ball game. So here we are, second down and eight from the nine yard line. We can't get a first if we get inside the one. We got one more timeout left. And we reset the huddle. 14 seconds on the play clock. We're still fine. Gabbroth and Clemens in the single wing set. Gabbroth. There he is. Looking to throw. He's got the man open, and he underthrows him. Had a man out there on the flats. Was bait and lane. He's sneaking out of the backfield, but just threw it behind him. Brings up third down now from the eight-yard line. With 46 seconds to go, the clock stopped after the incomplete pass. Oh, we had him. If he leads him, he probably can take it on into the end zone. He had that corner right there. Jim, we, we, this is fourth down territory. Mm -hmm. Three points don't help us. Got to have seven. Galbraith brings the play in. Sellers going to split out wide to the right. The Jackets come quickly to the huddle. Clemens fakes the inside handoff. He's trying to turn the corner. He's going to be run down and with very little gain on the play. He picked up a couple. It's going to be fourth down from about the six-yard line. They're gonna, we're going to go ahead and run the clock down, Jim, so this will be guaranteed. This will be the last play of the game. we got one timeout left. Coach Hilton talking to the official. Mm -hmm. So fourth down from about the seven. We could get a first down at the six, but we're only going to leave time for one play. As he's just waiting for the clock to run down. Mm. Big, big game here. And they Both called teams. a timeout with four seconds left. Timeout, we knew this was going to be a tight game. Mm -hmm. Dodge 21, Jeff Davis 14. The Jackets led 14 to nothing. Dodge scored in the closing seconds of the first half and then took the second half kickoff and drove it down to score. And then they just punched in one on a four play, 86 yard drive. And most of that came on one play from Laramie Mitchell. Who took it from his 19 to the two. So here's the ball game. 
Chance for the Jackets to get to overtime. Four seconds remaining. One more play to make. We got it fourth down from the seven. Are they going to call a timeout now? Ball sitting on the far hash. Looks like Colby Beach is going to get the play and bring it to the huddle. See who we try to sneak around into the end zone. Got to get it all the way in the end zone for seven yards out. Sellers is going to come to the near side. Clemens is going to come in a slot. Weaver in the backfield with Beach. Beach takes a snap. Look, looking to throw into the end zone. Intercepted by Dodge, and that's your ball game. Big, big play there. Great job by the Yellow Jackets. They dropped eight into coverage and had nowhere to go. We took a shot, tried to thread a needle, but that time is going to expire. Jeff Davis, 21. I mean, Dodge County, 21. Jeff Davis, 14 is your final. Let's take a quick 60-second timeout. We'll be back with our Bank of Hazelhurst coaches interview after 60 seconds. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports The Bank Network. of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. Back here at the Pinelands where the Jackets have just lost a heartbreaker, 21-14 to Dodge County. And Coach Helton is gathering his troops over by the way. And his few minutes will get him and Josh Horton for our Bank of Hazelhurst coaches interview to wrap this one up. It's going to be a, a tough one, to, a bitter pill to swallow here. But, boy, the guys fought hard tonight, Chris. Jim, they did, and we, we knew it was going to be a very close game. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, total yardage for both teams. Jeff Davis had 293. Dodge had 310 right there. You have, you have 17 yards difference between two, both teams. Um, the big play killed us a little bit, but yep. we had a couple of big plays to put us in the right spot. So, uh, fantastic game to call tonight, fun mm -hmm. to do. Uh, wish the Yellow Jackets would have had a – would have come out on top. But uh, very good game tonight. Travel to Fitzgerald tomorrow, next week, to take on the Purple Hurricane. And that uh, that doesn't get any easier, defending state champions. And uh, they're putting it on uh, Bering County tonight. Pretty strong, aren't they, Chris? Yeah, they are. What I've got right now is third quarter score, 42 to nothing. Uh, I have Sumter and Berrien tied at 28. All those scores for you on the Bacardi Auto Parts scoreboard. Applin Tombs 21 and to 7. Applin over Tombs. And let's see here. We've got, uh, I've got, now I've got 21 13 Applin Tombs. Gotcha. Still showing Valdosta 13, Lounge 6 at the half. Well, that's always a huge battle. It is. I got Coffee 28, Bradwell 7. Swainsboro 26, Jefferson County nothing. Montgomery over Portal. 24-15 in the fourth. And Johnson County all over Bacon County, 35-6. to six. That's Here Go with ahead. Coach Elton in the postgame interview. Coach, uh, tough one to swallow there. You, you ask these troops to come in and uh, change up the whole offense this week. They do, they do week after week, they do exactly what you ask them to. And you talked about it, those guys should fight every week. Uh, what are your thoughts? They fought their tail off. It's not on them. If you're going to blame somebody, blame me. I didn't execute the game plan well enough to win. Coach, good luck. Good luck. There you have uh, Josh Horton and Coach Helton of Bank Hazelhurst 
coach's interview, understandably, Coach Helton uh, really upset. Uh, you know, he, he he took it on himself. Uh, that's what good coaches do. And you know, uh, we co- you know, and I'm gonna say we coached hard, we played hard, and uh, a explosive play turned out to be the difference in the ball game. It did, Jim. Man, mm-hmm. again, it, it's tough as some. I mean, I hate the game's over. Yep. <laughs> uh, we sit here. It's, it's only ten o'clock, and I'm just. Mm-hmm. This was a great game between both teams. Uh, both teams fighting hard, very equally matched. Um, you know, like you said, we we give up a 78-yard run. Uh, if we could, if we could get that one thing back, mm-hmm. uh, you potentially have a different ball game right here. Yeah, if we get that back, then we send our strong-legged kicker on there, kick a field goal at the end, and celebrate and play the wagon wheel. That's you're exactly right. Uh, we do travel mm-hmm. to Fitzgerald next week, so. Uh, we, uh, we definitely need a crowd to go with us yep. to help us over there again uh, against uh, a very tough Purple Hurricanes team who is uh, taking it to Worth County tonight. Um, you know, but uh, very, we do wish Dodge a safe trip home. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget, uh, speaking of Dodge, the softball team will play Dodge yep. for the region title Monday in a doubleheader at four and at six. We got to win one of those to be region champs. So, um, you got nothing else to do Monday afternoon? Come out and see some. Good softball action. Yeah, but as far as football tonight, Jim, this is a yep. this is a heartbreaker. This was yep. a very good game by both teams. Mm-hmm. A very clean game. Just uh, uh, again, I hate to see that somebody had to lose this one. Well, that's going to do it here tonight for our great production crew with Jeff Davis High School and Mr. Riles for Josh Horton on the sidelines. Chris Davis here in the booth. This is Jim Sewell. Good night, everybody. Jeff Davis High School would like to thank the following alumni sponsors for their support of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Sweet Teas, Flowers, Gifts, and Custom Framing, Laney Internal Medicine Group, Lumber City Drugs, Cotton Partners, The Bedroom Store, Hazelhurst Auto, Pig Out Barbecue, Southern Root Salon, Stone's Machine Shop, Comfort Zone Heating and Air, Whitfield Free Love, South Georgia Dentistry, Coleman Tire and Auto, Alt Mulvey Outdoors, Water Service Center, Ragland Timber, Pallet One, McPherson Manufacturing, Renaissance Bank, Family Healthcare Connections, Davis Farm and Garden, Theater of Hazelhurst, Jeff Davis County Farm Bureau, and Bridgeford Church of God.